Are you dealing with a personal injury? Don't go it alone. Turn to the experienced team at Phillips Law Firm. Their attorneys have helped thousands of clients get the compensation they deserve. Call Phillips Law Firm now. Call 1-800-JUSTICE or visit justiceforyou.com. Hi, this is Tom Borthwick, the Diamond King. We have a huge selection in store. Ten times most places in Whatcom County. We have over 100 certified large diamonds in stock. We have trained staff that went to jewelry school. We offer huge discounts all the time, every day. We have three jewelers in our store. We want you to save time. We gift wrap everything and treat you kindly with knowledge. Thank you for shopping a family-owned, small business that supports nine families. We donate to over 50 charities per year. Thank you for being our customer, Borthwick Jewelry. Hey, it's Mike Hawk. Want more Men's Room content? Follow the Men's Room page of the Odyssey app and check out my live stream, A Moment with Mike Hawk, and nothing in particular with Steve the Thrill Hill. Going live Thursdays and Fridays at 1, exclusively on the Men's Room page of the Odyssey app. Unfortunately, what you're about to hear is real. The members of this radio program are simply not that bright. Or what some people would call educated. They are merely stupid. They're not trying to offend anyone on purpose. And all have played doctors on TV. You have been warned and are cordially invited to join the party. This is the men's room. Forget it, man, and get with the countdown. Get, 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 get with the countdown. Shake this square world and blast off the kicks, Bill. Kicks. <laughs> The trippers, the grasshoppers, the hip ones, all gathered in secrecy and flying high as a kite. This is the men's room with Miles and Thrill. You know what they say, shake your radio more than three times and you're playing with it. You're listening to the men's room. And away we go. Welcome to Season 18, Episode number 3,943. Along with Steve the Throw Hill. Three tits, man. <laughs> and my cock. Montgomery. And you are in the men's room. On tap today, the return of Who Sucks Less. A very special announcement concerning the Men's Room World Tour. We will play profile this. Plus headlines, a Men's Room shout of the day, fun with listener emails, and everyone's favorite, TV time with Tim. Click, clack. Right, get Tim drunk. All right, here we go. Miami man loses over $100,000 in watches after a woman puts something in his drink. Meanwhile, a man who escaped prison only had two months left to serve in the clink. 13-year-old takes parents' Tesla on a joyride before crashing into a pole. A truck crashes in California, and for you, no Tootsie Roll. And a Florida man misses his flight, so he threatens to blow up the airport. Smart. That is all coming on today's very special episode of The Men's Room. And now, here's the question. Hola, bitches. Good day to you and yours. All right, earlier this year, a man in Arkansas was arrested for piercing his son's ear. Now, there's a law there that makes it illegal to perform body art on anyone under the age of 16, even with parental consent. So dad pierced his kid's ear, and now he faces a felony. Now, you might think there's not a lot of father-slash-ear stories out there, and you'd be wrong. We go to Utah, where a woman was angry with her father about something. And to express her irritation, she bit off part of his ear. But I'll have you know that Biting off part of someone's ear, all the rage this summer. A woman in Florida also bit off someone's ear. In her case, she was leaving a party. She was accused of stealing booze. And in response, she bit off the accuser's ear. Ears, obviously, are important. Aside from keeping our glasses on our head, they provide that whole hearing thing, which comes in handy for, I don't know, enjoying this very radio show, or for hearing your neighbors have sex. And I bring that up not only because I'm creepy, but because a pair of sisters in Texas, they face years in prison after they threatened to murder their neighbors for having loud sex. Seems that the neighbors have been having loud sex a lot. And for that, I say good for them. But look, from Van Gogh to Mike Tyson to Mr. Spock, ears have a way of creating their own stories. Whether it's something they hear, something they don't hear. A spider climbed in while you were sleeping or your dog choked on a pig ear. Today, we're talking ears and this is our question. How did an ear figure into the story? To be a part of the big show, call 206-803-ROCK. You can like the Men's Room on Facebook, follow us on Twitter and Instagram at Men's Room Live, and send those emails to the Men's Room at KISW.com. The debauchery rolls on. You're listening to the Men's Room with Miles 
and Thrill. 99.9 KISW. Home and Jones, away we go. Welcome to Season 18, Episode number 3,943. What a large and in charge program we have for you today. Guaranteed future repeat. Future repeat. Exciting return of Who Sucks Last Steve. I don't know how you do it. You find uh, people doing bad things in the news, and every week you bring us three of these stories. Yeah. It is up to us to determine, out of the three, which one sucks the least. How brutal are these stories this week on Who Sucks Less? Well. They're not good. Okay, thank you, Mike. They're not good. That's oh, all. okay. Yeah, two of them have to deal with uh, bad parenting techniques, probably the hmm. best way to put it. Okay. And uh, and then a guy who, who got out of prison, but the prison's not done with him. That's the best way I can okay. explain. All right. Who Sucks Less is coming up also today. We have a very special announcement, uh, announcement concerning the Men's Room World Tour and stop number four. Which is, uh, believe it or not, going to happen only a couple of weeks away. That is correct. So it's coming up on us uh, pretty fast here. We'll make the announcement, give you all the details coming up about 420, 425 on the program right before we do the uh, the emails. Hope to see you there. We're going uh, basically a little bit closer to downtown Seattle this time. There you go. Yeah. Yeah. It's going to be a, it's going to be a great party. So uh, we'll give you the details uh, coming up with the Men's Room World Tour. Also, as we do every Monday through Friday, we head on over exclusively to the Odyssey app for the Men's Room app. Yeah. And episode number 437. If you don't have the Odyssey app, download it now. It's absolutely free. Search for the Men's Room page. That's where you'll find all things Men's Room. From the Men's Room radio channel that we get to put together. Some of our favorite tunes on there. All of our podcasts. The podcast. Brand new one. Mega podcast. Brand new one. Brand new. Uh, our daily podcast. Brand new one from yesterday. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Four hours of that crap if you happen to miss the show. And uh, all the other uh, shows that you happen to miss. We have uh, listeners that uh, are on their own schedules. Some around the country. And they catch up. I know our buddy uh, One-Eyed Greg in uh, uh, Reisterstown, Maryland. He says he's two weeks behind on the podcast. How does he get two weeks behind? Continues to try to catch up. Yeah, two eyes. He'd only be one week behind. See what happens? Yeah, you take a road trip, man. If you haven't heard a show, we're right there for you on the Odyssey app, and that's where you also find the Men's Room Happy Hour channel. Plus, like, we're not a running sitcom. You can pick up whatever. People don't do that. It's a weird thing, man. People, they insist on being chronological. I'm going... Okay. You know. I mean, other than the show number, there's really not that uh, kind of congeals this whole thing together. <laughs> yeah, I'm like, just top back in, Greg. Right, exactly. You won't do it. Yeah. You won't do it, man. <laughs> oh, by the way, there's a reason that the uh, Men's Room Happy Hour is labeled explicit, and it's because of Ted's potty mouth. So if you happen to have kids in the room or anything, Goddamn you know, right. You uh, make sure they're not there for the Men's Room Happy Hour. Let them MFers know, Miles. We'll, we'll, see, uh, yeah. we'll see you coming up here. Yes, yes. Thank on the, you. On the F and F. <laughs> Our question today, how did an ear figure into the story? We have tons. Of, and this is for everything from your actual ear to maybe something that you overheard. There's Which, a, yeah, yeah, yeah. There's a lot of things that can uh, cause people to lose their mind. Arkansas police arrested a man accused of piercing his teenage son's ear in alleged violation of state laws against various forms of body art. Officers booked Jeremy Sherlin on suspicion of performing a body piercing on a minor. Under 16, endangerment of a minor, resisting arrest, all those things. The investigation was touched off when the suspect's son told classmates he had his left ear pierced. While sitting in class talking with other kids and the teacher present, the juvenile male stated his dad was drunk, put him in a chokehold, and shoved the piercing in his ear. I think that's probably more the issue here. Yeah. Now, Sherlin refused to talk to officers when they first went to his home before they huddled with Washington County prosecutors returned to make the arrest. Video of the arrest appeared to show four police officers. Four police officers pushing their way into a home and handcuffing the man. It's for an ear piercing. Four police officers. We need more than two. Right. How about three? No. Gonna need more. How about four? Okay, we'll try our best. They handcuffed him. A woman in the video demands to know the charges before the handcuffed man throws his head back and breaks out in loud laughter. Ha 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 ha. He actually read each ha that they included in the article. Body art without a license. Body art without a license. He can be heard saying. As the man is marched around the corner and through the neighborhood, he can be heard laughing at officers. Police cited a section of Arkansas law saying a person shall not perform body art on a person under 16 years of age, regardless of parental consent. And when we first got this story, I uh, posed the question, now what about I've seen girls as young as four or five? With pierced ears. Have their ears pierced. I, it's got to depend on the state. Right, so so in and, Arkansas specifically, anybody under sixteen, that's 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 a big hard no. It'd be different if they said, "Look, your your kid said that you got drunk, got him in a chokehold, and did." I would understand why the cops are there, but they don't make that any part of the statement. They're like, "No, no, man, you you violated our body art 
thing. So, but mm-hmm. I thought about the same thing. Like, I know a lot of little girls, man, five, six years old, whatever. Mom takes them to get their ears pierced. I've never heard of any kind of conflict with that. Right. But I guess in Arkansas, they'd be like, dude, you can't do that. That's illegal. Your daughter wants her ears pierced. We can't. We're not going to do it here. Mm-hmm. We do have to cross state lines to pierce your daughter's ears. And then if and you come back, is it still illegal? I don't think. If you, go, think, like, if you go to a mall or a grocery store and there's a police officer there and he sees your daughter has pierced ears. He could ask, well, he's got where to call did three, she get He's the, got to call three people to back him up. But where did she get her ears pierced? If you're smart, just uh, we went over the state line. We did it so anywhere other than Arkansas. You would think that there's bigger fish to fry in the world of uh, things that... Uh, Needs to be addressed in a pecking order of what is really important. They may have as far taken as, uh, care of everything else. There was the, there was the last thing under list. Four officers yeah. need to show up for this. To me, that's a little bit excessive. Yeah. I'm just saying, I, if if there's a priority, and they list. poured into the house. Did you see the video? Yes. Yeah. yeah I mean, no, like, no, I haven't seen it. And it, basically, I mean, they like showed a, the like door open. Team. Yeah, and you're like, guys, it, my God. He pierced his kid's ear. Right. You know, he's not holding hostages. He's not hiding drugs. It's like he pierced his kid's ear. Yeah, if you're a cop in Seattle right now listening to the story, you're like, I'm moving to Arkansas. Because <laughs> <Right. laughs> like, the crap that I deal with around here is nothing compared to... He wasn't to, naked. He no, wasn't high. I just got to arrest this guy who pierced his uh, kid's ear. Okay, all right, I'll take that assignment. And somebody points out in the video, you can also hear the son yelling to the cops that he wanted his ear pierced. But again, well, Arkansas told his, law He, he told matter. his friends something yeah. different. So he kind of lied to his friend at school. Well, who knows? Or maybe he doesn't want his dad arrested. So. Yeah, either way. Right. Okay. That's insanity. Now we go to uh, Pleasant uh, Grove, no, I didn't Utah. watch it. I just hearing about it. It's just like, it's, it's just, it's insane. It, I right? agree. It's like, right. It's an, it's an ear piercing. I, like, I, I am with you. If the parent approves it, I don't, I don't see a big issue with it. But also, like. You're from around here, son. There's a lot of, there's a, a lot of times they go into houses. But, like, that, that one is, you don't need that. There's, no. a, there's nobody, there's nothing threatening. There's nothing. Mm-hmm. No. It's, it's a crazy. child. It's crazy. Meanwhile, a woman has been arrested after she allegedly bit off part of her father's ear during a dispute inside a Utah home. Rebecca Nelson, who's 42, was booked on multiple charges related to suspicion of aggravated assault. According to the probable cause statement, she entered the home and allegedly attacked her father, resulting in the injuries. Documents stated her father suffered a laceration to his ear, claiming that she bit him and tore off a chunk of skin. God. He also reported that she strangled him with both hands. Upon arrival, according to the affidavit, the father stated his daughter entered the residence and immediately made a threat to kill him. The affidavit also states that she then proceeded to forcefully bite his ear, resulting in the removal of said chunk and some skin. It was a large enough chunk. The victim was holding the chunk of skin in his hand when I arrived, according to an officer. Cool. Who read the statement? So the question, how did an ear figure into the story? 206-803-ROCK. Start with this text, which is remarkably stupid. A friend of mine's dad closed the car door on his ear. And he says he has, like, Dumbo-sized ears. Now, when he came inside to tell us what happened, we asked him how. And he went back out to show us what he did. And then he did it again. It was absolutely hilarious. We didn't laugh then, but we do now. Hmm. That's kind of tough to do. Close just your, your ear. ear. And then when Not you're your trying head. to show someone what you did, you still close your How big are your ears? Because you're right. Like, your head didn't get hit by the door, just your ear. And you're leaning that close to a closed door with your head anyway. Like, what? I want to see this guy open and close doors. Like, how do you open and close doors? So I want this guy to see a specialist. <laughs> mm-hmm. Or that. <clears throat> so, all right, something seems off. Let's go to Daniel. Hello, Daniel. Welcome to the men's room. Hola, and happy hump day to you and yours. Hola. Hola. Uh, real quick, can I give a shout out to my brother? Sure. Yeah. Awesome. Hey, Anthony Gandulia, I love you. You are amazing. You're an awesome brother. What? I know he's listening because he is an avid listener to your program. Okay, let me ask you this, all right? So it's your brother. You said something very positive, something very beneficial. Why wouldn't you just call his ass and mm-hmm. tell him? Or text him. Like, hey, man. I love you, dude. You're a great guy. Just saying. Oh, I do whenever I talk to him, but we don't talk that often. But I know he listens to your show, so okay. that's why I wanted to say it now. Is he older or younger? He is my youngest brother, but he is the tallest in the family, a.k.a. the moose child. The moose child? Okay. Yes, we call, we call him the moose child. Or the UPS child, yes. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> So, uh, my ear story is back in uh, early 2020, before the pandemic came and just shut everything down, I was in a self-defense course, and uh, the instructor was giving a demonstration, and I can't exactly remember 
how it happened, but he did the demonstration on me, and then his hand or arm connected with my head, bopped me on the ear, and now I have a cleft ear. Or cauliflower ear. I can't remember how you pronounce it. Probably, but it's, uh, well, what, yeah. You look like you wrestle. Which is a good yeah, deterrent. The, the, which, the is a gr- which is a great deterrent from anyone wanting to mess with you. Believe it or not, Daniel, that one sign says more than any skill that you learned in that class. Because I don't know <laughs> that you know self-defense. But when you got cauliflower ears, I know that physical combat is something you'd your, engage Your in ground that. game is going to be good because typically that dictates that you've been wrestling or you've been ground into a mat and you've had pretty severe ear damage. And there's only one way that that can happen. Right. That's with a mat, and that's when you're wrestling or doing some Correct. type of uh, ground, you know, work. It's, I mean, it's I don't know anyone that has it that is wasn't a wrestler or didn't do jiu-jitsu. Look at look at boxers. Right. You know, boxers, they other than Evander Holyfield, that's a different story. But their ears are not all mangled up, and they're involved in a contact sport that involves you know punching each other and everything else. I did see a guy with uh, I told years ago uh, this bar we used to go to, and a guy I knew I would not say friend, but a guy I knew named Chuck. Long story short, he got punched in the gut by an amateur boxer. We did not know he was an amateur boxer, but Chuck decided to start stuff with this guy for no reason at all. But as he's kind of giving this guy crap, I mean about, no, you stared at me, all that kind of crap. The guy's like, man, I I really wasn't. Sorry (laughs) if you thought I was. And we're trying to just get Chuck to back off a little bit because the guy was real calm, real, real calm. And the guy was there with his buddy, so the buddy was kind of speaking on his behalf. And he's like, hey, man, like, seriously, back off. Don't mess with him. Don't mess Chuck, you know, F that, F him, F you, and kind of like poked his shoulder. Mm-hmm. So now the guy who'd been sitting kind of quietly, and we realized he had a bit of a cauliflower ear. So we're just thinking, this is not going to end well for Chuck, but let's see how it plays out. So the guy said, look, man, you, you can yell at me all you want. Don't touch me again. So Chuck pulls one of those, Bam. or what deals? Guy gets up, and it was one punch. And the way my buddy Hollywood described it. So Chuck gets punched in the gut, and he says, I swear to God. Chuck's toes touched his forehead at this guy's elbow. I mean, just dropped him, and he buckled to the ground like a broken transformer. I mean, he's just laying there. After the guy punched Chuck's, we're like, wow, man. His buddy's like, oh, he's an amateur boxer. We're like, we can tell because Chuck's going to be down for a little while. Right. Yeah. But again, we're just looking at his ears like, you probably don't want to mess with this guy. Uh, you know, you had that situation with your catheter when they removed the catheter. Yes, the farting your, catheter. Your, farting your, penis. And your penis was, you know, all the air was coming out of your razor. Not the same type of experience, but I did have one that involved my ear, and this was probably about three or four years ago. I go down to see my uncle in Florida. I fly down there, and my uncle's got a nice little pad. In the back, he has what I would consider to be a teeny tiny pool. Okay. It might be three and a half to four feet. It's basically just Just across across or deep? Deep. So it's not really, it's just, it's a little teeny triangle, and it sits on a deck in in his backyard. Either way... In the morning, because it's so warm there, I would get up, jump into the pool, right. hang out in there for 10, 15 minutes, you know. Then I'd get in the shower, get, get dressed, go play golf or whatever we're doing that day. And as soon as you get back from being in the sun, 90-some degrees, as soon as I walk in the house, I jump into the pool. Yeah, of course. So this goes on for about five days. And uh, right before I'm getting ready to leave, uh, my ear starts to just hurt. And I realize, all right, I've been in the pool for five days, a few times a day. Definitely have some swimmer's ear yeah. on my left side. This is, it's problematic. I keep trying to, you know, shake my head out and see if I can break this thing or whatever. And it's just not moving. There is some pain, but it's not too brutal. But it's just like that, you know, like when you can't pop your ear. Yeah. It's yeah. annoying. It is, it's annoying as hell. And it's just swimmer's ear. So, lo and behold, uh, get ready to leave, get on the plane. The plane takes off and we're uh, headed to Atlanta. And I feel like, all right. We're in elevation. I'm going to yawn. You know what I mean? Try I'm to trying to pop boy. my ear. And I'm, I'm in the window seat. I'm like, ah, nothing happens. I have some gum, start chewing gum. Nothing happens. I'm like, all right, whatever. Get to Atlanta. Now, that, that, that flight I'm on is probably a 45-minute flight. They don't get real high, whatever yeah. like that. So now I'm on the big Delta flying home. We get to 32,000 feet or whatever the deal is. Ah, and all of a sudden, phew, my left ear explodes. And shoots pool water all ah. over the window of the aircraft. God, man! Oh yeah, I took my I took my beverage napkin <laughs> and started wiping the window because it looked like it looked like a squirt. So if you had been in the middle seat and did that, you would have sprayed the person the next person to you in the face. The person beside me with pool water. <laughs> it shot out of my ear when I yawned. It successfully <laughs> broke the seal on this damn thing, and I was like, "I will be damned! I am." 
I did not know that was possible. <laughs> I did not know either. I did not know that that could happen. I'm like, God, that. And all of a sudden, like, I could hear. And I'm thinking to myself, man, have I been Did talking? you hear people going, that was gross. Have I been talking loud? Because, right. like, it was such a... I have something in my ear! When it's, when it's clogged up, you can't... You can't, it, you it, can't everything it. sounds different. Right, exactly. So, like, but it was like, it was like this... And then everything was clear again. I was like, oh, my God. But I looked over and just, I mean, I seriously covered the window. I mean, it was running down the window. It was a, it was a pretty substantial amount of water. That is gross, man. It was gross. It was relieving. I, mean, I know I it's like, relieving. I just but... thought it was going to pop. I didn't right. realize crap was going to shoot. <laughs> <laughs> How did it here figure into the story? 206-803-ROCK. And K-I-S-W. The shenanigans continue. This is the Men's Room with Miles and Thrill. Our question, how did an ear figure into the story? 206-803-ROCK. One from the text line, I found out I was allergic to yellow jackets when I got stung behind my right ear while I was mowing the lawn. I looked like half of Hey Arnold from the Nickelodeon cartoon, and my right ear (laughs) is still larger than my left ear, and the right earlobe is extra jiggly. This was 25 years ago. Damn. Mm, Let me see that jiggly ear. I want to see a picture, man. Hey, girl. Come on, man. Send us back. I want to make fun j- of your jiggly ear. Make it jiggle, jiggle. Look at them jiggly ears. Yeah. I'm calling jiggle. My ear wiggle, wiggle. <laughs> hello, hello, Michelle. Welcome to the men's room. <laughs> Hola, bitchola. Oh, yeah. So I got a really, really bad ear tattoo. First of all, the picture, I mean, as cliche as this is, was from Pinterest. And one thing I did not notice, I thought it was a tattoo, and it very well could have been henna. And um, so when I went in to go get a tattoo, if the tattoo artist was anything professional, you should have told me that doing this and putting the ink in the ear will blow out because of the cartilage is so thin. But instead, he just performed the tattoo, and now it just looks like this giant black blob in my left ear. So what was it supposed to be? It was supposed to be like some kind of a flower type of thing, and I had like a diamond stud for the center of it and everything, and then the the center ah. of it, because he did the piercing too. Okay, and I see. The piercing got infected, and everything went wrong with this whole tattoo. How long did it take for you to realize that this whole thing was going to go south? <laughs> well, it wasn't until like maybe a month or two later, until like after like all the scabs healed up and everything too, that I noticed that it was like, not as thin as the needle like I thought he was trying to do. But then he did another botched one at the same day, at the same time, on my wrist that I ended up getting my cover-up on. But the guy who did my cover-up on my wrist tattoo said he would not touch my ear. He said it's just better, better to go get it lasered. Oh, damn. Okay. So if yeah. I look at you right now, and, and I'm assuming it's real obvious when people look at you that there's something yeah. gross on your ear. They think it's like, you know how like you have those old like microphones or, you know, like things for your phone, like a headpiece yeah. in your ear? That's what they see. They just see oh. like a black blob. So oh, ha- have know. people told you that? Do like strangers ever ask you about it or anything when you're out? All the time. They'll first look at it like this. They catch it and then they're like, oh, that's so cool. Like you get a tattoo and you're like, how unique. And I was like. Yeah, but don't do it. <laughs> where, 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 where else on your body do you have a tattoo that would not be the oh the, the norm as far as uh, what what most people would get? I guess. Well, most of mine are pretty normal. Like I ended up that cover up ended up going from just a simple wrist tattoo to an entire sleeve. Oh, that's cool. Um, the the other wrist I got just a simple tattoo on the other one. I've got one on my instep, one on my lower back, one on the middle of my back, one on each shoulder. I think right. that's about it. Yeah, those are, those are pretty normal places. Have you thought about getting a matching blob on the other ear so at least it, it balances out? <laughs> no, absolutely not. I mean, I took Percocet just to make sure I could get this one done. <laughs> I was like, I, you know, like I get tattoos all the time. I don't mind the pain. But right. the needle inside of my ear was just more psychological for me. Well, well yeah. The yeah. good news is if you're on a bus and people think that's an earpiece, they won't talk to you. <laughs> well, that's a good thing, then, yeah, right? Yeah, yeah. Exactly. It can be. Oh, she's on the uh, she's on the phone. I, I got one last question about the the ear blob yeah. tattoo that you got, because okay. kids, unless you ask them something directly, they're the most honest. Do kids like stare and oh, point yeah. at you? I have not really had kids. It's just mostly like adults, or and mostly for whatever reason, too, like females. Like, oh, that's really cool. And then I'm like, don't do it, sweetie. Like. Well, at least all over the place. even if the guy messed up, the good news is at least everyone keeps commenting that it's cool. Right. Yeah. Even if it's not. Look, the first tattoo I got, however many years ago it was, like 
29 years ago. First time I go to the tattoo place, right? Pretty dumpy place, but whatever. And there were two artists working that particular day. And there's an old dude who looked like Yosemite Sam doing a guy in the chair next to me. I'm sitting down. My artist is prepping, right? So I haven't started yet. And I hear the old guy. He's doing a tattoo on the guy's bicep. And you just hear him go, uh-oh. Which, look, let's face it. Doctors, tattoo art, you don't want to hear, uh-oh. And so the, the guy looks down and goes, man, I messed up your name. So the guy was getting his own name tattooed on his arm. The guy's name was Tim. Tim. What did he put, Tom? He left out the eye. So he's, yeah. Oh, he's trademark. Yeah, he's trademark. Oh, no. And I'm like, it's, but again, I'm about to get my first tattoo, and I'm like, oh, man, I may have made a big mistake. As long as you're not using your name. Don't use your name, but I remember that day the guy's like, I'll tell you what, man, we'll, uh, we'll do this one on the house. The guy's like, goddamn right, it's on the house, man. That's it's not house. what I asked My for. name is Tim. How do you misspell Tim? <laughs> How did an ear figure into the story? 206-803-ROCK. Hello, Sam. Welcome to the men's room. Bitches. Hola. So, no, I got you beat on the years. 1982, I was going to UNLV. I met a chick at a party. I don't know where we're going, but we needed some beer. And so I go into the 7-Eleven, leave her out in the parking lot. And the next thing you know, I am getting smashed over the head. And I look behind me, and there's this big, hefty woman with a box of tampons in her hand. She just cocked me over the head with a box of tampons. And uh, so anyway, I yell at her, like, who the hell are you? I didn't know who she was. And then she's with some big guy. I shoved him down, run out the door. The chick's leaving. I jump in the back window of her car. Well, we peel out of there. And then I'm looking at him. I got blood coming down all over my right arm. And uh, so that was the end of the date there. I had to go to the hospital, and they uh, put about seven stitches in the back of my right ear from a box of tampons. She I hit you with yeah. a box of tampons in this box. Oddly enough, the tampons are what made you bleed, but she hit you with this box of tampons, and you had to get seven stitches. Yeah, she should have took one out of the box when she was done, I guess, and wrapped it around my ear. Well, I, I just can't believe a box, a box that's, could, that, yeah. that's light could, could cut you that bad. Well, unless she, she hit must, it with a corner. Yeah, she must yeah, have smacked. The, the corner, yeah, the corner of those boxes is, you know, cardboard, and it's pretty sharp, obviously. I mean, it just... See, but this, this, this is just a random attack. What's that? That was just a random attack. Well, yeah, just a random woman. I never saw her before in my life. And, um, and she decided this so, is the day she's going to hit a stranger with a box of tampons. Yeah, I figure she must have had me mistaken for somebody else, right? Could be. I don't know. Uh, or what, she's well, just crazy. When you explain this to the yeah. person who's stitching you up, are they like, what in the hell, man? <laughs> right. Oh, man, I got to back up because I just lost your voice there. I said, uh, can you hear me now? Yeah, yeah, we can hear you. When you when you explain this to the doctor, were they like, "Oh my God, what the, what the hell's going on?" Crap! I guess I just lost. I don't think you can hear us. Yeah, yeah it's something. Just happened. let him okay. go. Either way, is it, tampons to the head. If you're a doctor, is it okay to just laugh openly at the patient? I mean, not like if you come in, you got your legs severed. I get that, but I'm saying, you know, I'm a doctor. How did this happen? Because they're always going to ask that question. You're like, look, man, this lady I don't know. Hit me over the head with a box of tampons at a 7 Eleven. Like, I'm sorry, I'm going to break out and laugh. I mean, I don't think you're like. Not hysterics not doubled hysterics, over. But you could clearly, you could clearly kind of crack a smile and laugh. Like, yeah. when I had that one giant hematoma growing, like, yeah. doctors kept coming in. I was like, are you the doctor? No, I just got to see it. No. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> so, I mean, like, you know you're they were fine with about. that. Right? Yeah. yeah like, I've never seen one that big. But cool. Well, when you think about it, even like with an NFL athlete. Those guys are running real fast. It's heavy contact. They get hit all the time, even though they have pads on. I've never seen a professional athlete even have that kind of a, you know, an impact bruise area before. Oh, yeah. I mean, so. I, I mean, it's lucky that whatever, when that, when that pallet exploded, mm -hmm. how that didn't break my skin, thank God, is, is amazing. And what exactly yeah. happened? You were what, sledding on a wooden pallet down? Yeah, down Denny. Denny. Yeah, and right as it crosses over. Like I five, it kind of flattens out. Okay, but we were—I mean, we were booking, but we we couldn't steer it. I yes. should have bailed. I didn't, and it hit the curb flush. Oh, so the pallet just like exploded. So one of those shards just rammed up in my right <laughs> cheek.
Now, was the adrenaline yeah. to the point then where you realized how bad the, the impact was? Whatever you call Jaeger. Yeah. <laughs> okay. right. right. So, I mean, that was the thing. Like, I, right? Like, we were hanging out. Like, I remember walking home and I was like, ooh, right. that's a little sore. And then, right, then the next morning, I, I could barely move. Like, I mean, it took me, it, I can't remember, it took me forever to put a sock on. It was, oh, God. It was tremendous pain. Right, then I got to work and it was, everybody was like, you need to go to the hospital. Mm-hmm. I mean, there's a really I feel like nothing, we, I've there's, said there's, that to you more than anyone that I've known. Yeah, that twice. Like, we openly have to say, Ted, you got to go to the and hospital. Other than, right? other than giving you some type of pain medication, there's, there's not really a lot they can do for that, right? There, th- you're absolutely right. There's not. They gave me a lot of pain meds and basically were like, just try to relax. Right, because even when I was in there... They had shot me up with something. Right. Right, because I've told this story, but she's like, here's 60 Percocet, and I kind of cracked a smile, and she was like, oh, no. Well, you think it hurts now. Wait till a day or two. For you're going to need oh, these. God. Yeah. She was like, you're going to be in so much pain. The worst news is when the doctor gives you pain pills and tells you, you're going to need all of these. Because mm-hmm. right. every time they say, like, you know, here's 60, I'm mean, going to need all 60. I'm like, can you give me 90? I just, look, I also want to yeah. enjoy them for a non-medical reason. Well, and this was like, oh, six. 07, when they were just passing them out, like that. First of all, I didn't need 60 of them. I right. definitely needed some of them, but. Mm-hmm. They did the same thing uh, as around the same time at like an emergency tooth extraction, whatever the hell it is. So, Batman's dentist, she managed to see me at a time that normally a dentist would not be open. She doesn't think so. She said, based on who your friend is, Batman, she just said, I'm going to give you all these Percocets. And she honestly said, based on who your friend is. So, she handed me all these drugs. And I'm like, cool, but I'm not a big pill guy. Like, I like my drugs, just pills aren't aren't for me, right? So, but I do know people that like pills. At the time, weed was not legal. And one of our coworkers at this time always had his hands on weed. Like, always had his hands on good weed. So I say, hey, man, I got 30 Percocet. I'm not taking them, and I don't need them. How much weed can I get for this? So, basically, we did it. An illegal drug exchange at work. He gave me an ounce of weed. Nice, gave nice. him 30 Percocets, and I want to say he went to the woods and had a great time. How did an ear figure into the story? 206-803-ROCK. Did he ever come back? He did. You know who he is. Oh, yeah. Yep. Right. Makes sense now. Hello, Jeremy. Welcome to the men's room. Hola, bitch. Hola. Hola. So, with mine, I was a teenager when I realized my left ear is different from my right ear. Different how? Um... So if you look at my left look at my left ear, it's flat compared to like you have the ridges in your ear. Yeah. And so talk to my mom, I'm like, hey, what's going on? I noticed this. She goes, Oh, when you were born, you tried to breathe early, and so we heard gurgling noises. So the doctor grabbed hold of your head and pulled you out, and more than likely broke the cartilage in your ear. Oh wow! He pulled you out by your ears. Pretty much. So. <laughs> The fun of it now is when I go see a new barber, when they're you know, checking the level of your, your hair, and they're, they, all of a sudden they just turn us look at both ears and start staring at the, at the loved one, and I just start laughing. Are they, so are, they, they are they are they even as far as, you know, uh, wearing glasses? Yeah, so, they're even as far as wearing glasses. I can actually push on the left ear, and it will pop into what it should look like. Ugh. But other than that, it's just the upper uh, section of it is just flat. Huh. Interesting. Okay. That is weird, man. Mm-hmm. Are you are you married or dating anyone? I'm dating somebody. All right. How long into your relationship before the ear came up? Uh, haven't really talked about it. Oh, yeah. okay. I mean, I really think unless you're like looking at someone and, and trying to notice that, that might not be the most noticeable feature. I. But once you bring it up, you can't not notice. All right. So Stephen Colbert. Host of the Colbert Show, right? Late night, whatever the hell it is. He has, I can't remember which ear it is. He has one normal ear, and then the other one kind of folds out on top, almost like a dog's right. ear. Yeah. And he mentioned it. And once he mentioned it, and I'm a fan of his, but once he said it, every time he was on TV, pre strike, I couldn't not notice that his ear's sticking mm-hmm. out, right? But apparently, uh, his are also uneven and granted he's got the money to do it but when he gets glasses done they have to put the arms of the glasses slightly different okay so that he can just wear his glasses straight paul stanley from kiss right been a rocker for 50 years whatever but he said look man everyone thought i was like this rocker kid when i was growing up the truth is i liked r b but they thought i was a rocker kid because i grew my hair long i grew my hair long because i have a deformed ear 
Right. And he's like, people sense. used to make fun of me. I mean, why like, not? He hated So he's like, that's why I grew my hair long. Then I ended up joining a band. I, uh, a kid I went to school with, he had pointy ears. They were definitively pointy ears. Like was Spock he an elf? Or? Like Spock, like an elf, you name it. All these different, all these, na- <laughs> trust me, Vulcan, uh, the Green Goblin. He was oh, called, damn. He, those, those was like 10 different nicknames. <laughs> Did he hate Christmas? Who, what's the original Dracula? Uh, uh, Nosferatu. Yeah, they called him that. <laughs> damn. And there's nothing you can do no, about it. No, it's like, guys. Oh, How like, do you get pointy ears? Well, the fact of the matter is he always had a buzz cut, so it was just very, very prominent. <laughs> I'm, I'm looking at a picture of people with them. Oh, that is God. wild. It is. I mean, you literally... You can you can get that cosmetically oh! done for elfin ears, but you, there are people who actually that, have these no. ears. Hmm. Did he prance around with glitter? <laughs> right. And he was not a big... Also, he was not a, He was not one of the bigger kids. So he was... He was oh, they usually are. He was smaller and yeah, right. not as tall. And he fed on himself. And really skinny. <laughs> so it was even more the fact that he... That they have incredible toy-making right. skills, Miles. That's right. right. Did you ever find him at the end of a I rainbow mean, with a pot of gold? Trust me. If this, if, this guy was, if this guy was six foot three and weighed 200 bills, you would not be talking to him that way. Right, right, right. He would not have 12 different nicknames. Did he make me shoes? This guy's name was Daryl, too. <laughs> Daryl. Daryl. Daryl with the pointy ears. Daryl the Vulcan. Damn, Daryl man. <laughs> I just I didn't Man, know. Kids are ruthless. I mean, I call I was called Dinos because of my nose. Right. Kids, kids when they figure out what they're going to call you, it doesn't. It there's sticks. That's no, it. No holds barred. It's just whatever it is. Yeah, we had a guy named Gilligan because he looked like Gilligan. The problem was he was massive, so he'd beat your ass. But you still couldn't help but call him Gilligan. Oh, Gilligan's getting mad. Then Gilligan would beat the hell out of him. You're like, stop, Gilligan. Mm-hmm. Stop hitting me. Stop calling me Gilligan. I couldn't even tell you his name to this day. Oh no. I, I was in school with him for three years. I knew his name then, but thinking back, I'm like, oh, man, I only know him as Gilligan. Like, if he hit me up on Facebook, if I were on Facebook and said, hey, it's me, so-and-so, mm. no idea who you are, he would have to go back and say, it's me, Gilligan. Like, oh, yeah, buddy, how you doing? One of the guys on a football team, he was, I can't describe it, he did not have ankles. What? His ankles <laughs> were the same size as his calf and almost the same size as his thighs. Oh, it's so- ankle. It, but it went the whole way up, and then he yeah, was so pretty, just topped up. Then he was barreled, and he had no neck because of the, <laughs> so we called him Trunk. <laughs> he could barely get a helmet on his head. They had to order special earpieces that were really thin to be able just to get the helmet to fit over top of his head. I saw I saw a coach once take a like a main pad out of a helmet. The same thing. What dude's head was so big? <laughs> Put it on. <laughs> How did an ear figure into the story? 206 803 Rock. Dealing with an accident and injury claim can be overwhelming. Let Phillips Law Firm fight for you. We understand the pain and suffering, and we're here to guide you through. Call 1 800 Justice today for a free case review or visit justiceforyou.com and let Phillips Law Firm help you on the road to recovery. Hi, this is Tom Borthwick, the Diamond King. We have a huge selection in store. Ten times most places in Whatcom County. We have over 100 certified large diamonds in stock. We have trained staff that went to jewelry school. We offer huge discounts all the time, every day. We have three jewelers in our store. We want you to save time. We gift wrap everything and treat you kindly with knowledge. Thank you for shopping a family-owned small business that supports nine families. We donate to over 50 charities per year. Thank you for being our customer, Borthwick Jewelry. What's up? It's your boy, the Ted Smith from the Men's Room. And did you know I have a podcast? Well, I do. The Podcast. New episodes uploaded every Wednesday on the Odyssey app. Point nine KISW. We return to the Men's Room with Miles and Thrill. All about the ears on this one. <clears throat> Two Texas sisters facing decades in prison after they threatened to shoot their neighbor dead Yay. for having loud sex. Alexis Davis and Treasure Bibbs of Houston. Treasure, Treasure Bibbs. Treasure Bibbs. Treasure Bibbs. That just both, sounds like a good pair of clothes. Both pulled guns. It does. On a couple in a neighboring apartment. Over concerns, they were making too much noise during loud sex, according to the smoking gun. Oh. Siblings were busted oh. for aggravated assault with a deadly weapon, which oh. carries a maximum penalty of 20 years behind bars. Yeah. It is not the first time that they had threatened uh, to kill the lovebirds, Kevin Frank and Kiara McPherson, and their children. In connection with their lusty liaisons that were loud enough to have the neighbors here, sisters had previously left notes on the family's door expressing their wishes to kill them over their two noisy relations, according to the article. Our question, how did an ear figure into the story? 206-803-ROCK. Speaking of sex, now, Miles, you had a friend. I think you had a friend. 
who had dated a deaf chick. That is correct. And I guess they said, like, having sex with someone who's deaf is an entirely different experience because of the sounds that they make? Or? That is correct. There's no filter. Uh, uh, and and she, she was very much aware of that. Right, of course. But he said it was uh, problematic if you were trying to... Sneak one in if you're in the in the den downstairs, or you know, <laughs> right. somebody was still in the house, even if it was a sibling or anybody else. Right, right, right. Even if you went parking, the moans made it seem like someone was being assaulted. <laughs> Some cops come running up to the. Well, car. I mean, anybody would be concerned by, by, sure. by the sound. We well, have no volume control. Right, correct. Right. And and it's just you being unfiltered and natural as far as what you're experiencing. You got to wonder what just like purely natural sex sounds would be. Right, because we can watch porn, and you kind of you're going to hear heavy breathing and all that, and people talk stuff, and they do all this. But like, if you have no idea, right? And I'm deaf, and you are just giving it to me, and it is good. I mean, am I just screaming at the top of my lungs? Am I making weird noises? I also think different sex acts have different. Uh, you'll make different, different sounds. Sound. Ooh, mm-hmm. yeah. And there's certain. Ow, there's no ow, way to ow. describe it, but there's certain things like right. It's just like ah, yeah. <laughs> Jesus. Yes, right. in those moments. Those moments, I think we all make uh, very different sounds, yes. Right? Ah, yeah. Jeez, wait. <laughs> it's kind of what it was like, right? <laughs> That's when you know it's good. <laughs> That's a really good love right there. And yeah, that was well, James Earl to... Jones. <laughs> yeah, it's, the equi- oh, just it's the equivalent of biting into something. You just go, mmm, oh, mmm, mm, yeah. mm, oh, mmm. Here comes the dope pusher. <laughs> yes. oh. Collins in an ear, figure into the story. 206 803 Rob. I mean, I know what he's going to say there, but for a second, I thought he was going to say something else. I know. Happy Chinooka. I'm going to say that when I finish. Happy Chinooka. Hello, Zach. Welcome to the men's room. Hola, Michola. Hola. Hola. Hey, so real quick, I don't. Uh, I have a fun fact for you about uh, Weird Al and Kurt Cobain. I don't know if you guys are aware of it. What would that be? Uh, so apparently Weird Al came up to uh, Kurt Cobain and was like, hey, I want to do a parody of uh, Smells Like Teen Spirit, but I want it to be centered around nobody can understand what, you, what you're saying. And apparently Kurt Cobain laughed hysterically and was like, all right, let's go. Yeah, Smells Like Nirvana. Yeah. Oh, well, that's right. Yeah. That was the name of it. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. yeah. But uh, anyway, my ear story. So this was about four years ago. Uh, me and my roommates, we like to play video games. We were thinking about setting up a couple of TVs out in the front room. So I had an extra TV in my in my closet. Well, we were already like the whole 12-pack of PBR in, and uh, I'm feeling good. For whatever reason, I decided to go get a Q-tip to start cleaning my ear because I got, like, a little bubble in my right ear, which is my good ear. While I have the Q-tip in my ear, I go into my closet to grab my TV, and I slip, fall, slam the Q-tip against the wall into my ear, onto my eardrum. Oh, man. And I wake up the next morning with blood coming out of my ear. So how how bad was the damage? Did you ever uh, go to the doctor for it? Uh, I should have, but I did not. I, I couldn't hear out of that ear. Like, you know that ringing when you come out of, like, a loud concert? Sure. I had that for about a week. Oof. And Jesus. so what, it's just, and, it's naturally just got to heal on its own, I'm guessing? Yeah, basically. I mean, I, from from what people have told me, they were like, dude, you should have gone into the doctor to get it checked out. But yeah. I'm like, you know what, it's not consistently bleeding. It was, it was a little bit of, of drip out. That I, that I found dried up, but it didn't continuously bleed. Um, I just kind of let it go, and if there were any problems throughout that week, I was like, okay, then I'll cave. But kind of came back. But unfortunately now, that's my bad ear. So anytime I put in, like, a headphone or, like, an earbud, like, it's, it's noticeably different from my left ear. So like, if, you, if, you got, if, if, if you got tested, you, you did some damage to your eardrum that's uh, irreparable. Yeah, chances are. Irreparable. Yeah. I see what you did there. Right. Irreparable. Irreparable. Right. Irreparable. <laughs> mm-hmm. nice. Well, hey, look, man. Q-tips are one of the few things where 99.9% of the people who use them do not follow the instructions. And you, Correct. You know what they tell you not yeah. to do. And I, I'm Everyone guilty does. of it. Me too. So I'm right. Saying. It feels so satisfying. I don't know anyone who's ever said, like, I, I, I don't take the Q-tip and put it in there to get the wax out. And I know they said, look, man, the fibers are getting stuck. In there. We understand. We understand. Uh... But I still do. Cause, and also, man, you know, when you clean it, like, 
kind of the outside of your inner ear, you get a little bit of stuff. Yeah, you do. But when you dip that bad boy in the place they tell you not to put it, like that's where the stuff. Like I got some wax. But then you had that. You 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 pushed. Uh, you just basically. Worked. I did. You I know? did it all the time. Look, I still do. Like it. a trash should. compactor. Right, but it got there was so much in there that like when I was taking showers. Sounded kind of hollow on one side of my head. All right. So first I thought it was allergies and this and that, but it went on for weeks. And then yeah, I went to the doctor and he looked in there. He's like, "Oh my god, there is a massive buildup of wax because I had been pushing too hard on Q-tips and packing it in there." But same thing, they use some to- some toy, some <laughs> tool, tool like needle nose tongs, pliers, something. Or something. And it, trust me, they're you think your, they clicked them before they went in. Your there, like, ear barbecue? canal, eh, <laughs> it's flimsy or. Real tight, all right. So it doesn't feel good as it hurts. But man, when they got that thing, I mean, literally, it's like and like popped uh, out. Yeah. Did and you then, look at it? Yes. I mean, it was it was as gross as you think it could be. <laughs> How big was it? About like size of a pea, the size of a bean. What color? Maybe like a bean. Okay, but size of a you bean. You know, Miles, it looked like a piece of hash. Did it really? I, 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 that's exactly <laughs> what I'm picturing. I mean, you should have I mean, put it, it was, on it, foil. There was a little, but I mean, it was dark because it had been in there forever. And they and that, I mean, that doctor. Laid in me pretty good. Like, stop, push, you know. But, like, when you're using Q-chips every morning, it's hard not to be like, let me just get a little left. I know. Right. I told yeah. him to no, get no. in there. I did it this morning. And I would check the Q-tip, like you check your toilet I do it paper. every time I get out of the shower. Yeah. yeah. Just like, it's like, right. routine. We know somebody who heard a scream from upstairs with their husband. Or they had kept saying, don't go in there too far. And, like, yeah, uh, I think he, like, I don't know if he ruptured it, but he definitely hurt his ear and had to go to the doctor. What exactly is earwax? I mean, is it just oil and Ugh. dirt collected together? Is it something your body does to keep other crap out? Probably. Because the thing is, you know, no, no, you, no, like, you like, clean like, them every day, but someday, inexplicably, you know, like you said, every day I take a shower, clean up my ears, it's about the same amount of wax, and then for whatever reason, one day, for no reason that I can figure out, there's significantly well, more. Well, your body does everything for a reason, whether it's your boogers in your nose, mm-hmm. all, all those things actually have a purpose to them. Do you know the technical name for Your booger? eyebrows have a purpose. Your pubic hair yeah. has a purpose. So like, if it's on your body, whatever it is, it's, I don't, it's Sometimes it's I feel like if I go out, especially in like have a big Saturday and drink a bunch, I feel like there's more wax in my ear on Sunday. Do so you can build it up? I, it, could, it could just be me connecting dots that aren't there, but I'm, <laughs> I've convinced myself that if, I, if I'm party, well, in the my dryer, ears get waxed. In the drier the air you have. I mean, trust me, whenever I go down to the to the desert, even if it's in eastern Washington, I, I have things rolling out of my ears. You're not kidding. I have You're things kidding. rolling out of my nose. It, it's just so dry. Like, your whole body's like, just, hey, you can get rid of this now. It's it's not uh, moist anymore. I will say, uh, visiting my parents in New Mexico, it was in April, right? And it's just bone dry there. I mean, Christ, it's a desert. But take a shower, clean my ear. But, yeah, the consistency of the earwax was different than I, mm-hmm. than I get anywhere else. I'm like, what the hell is this? And you're right, because it's, it's dry. Not, not only that, but it, back, back to the pool and getting in the pool. If you spend a whole day in the pool mm. and then you clean your ears with all that chlorine in the water, yeah, it's almost like you gave yourself an ear bath. <laughs> an ear you bath. Use your, you use your Q-tip and you're like, oh my God, and, I loosened up all this just by sticking my head underwater for a few hours, you know? It's crazy. An ear enema. Yeah. How did an ear figure into the story? 206-803-ROD. <laughs> Hello, Stephen. Welcome to the men's room. Good afternoon, gentlemen. Hola. Back to you, even. Hey, I was in the Navy a few years back, and we were flying to North Island from Whidbey Island. And the flight path that they take into North Island is very steep on the landing. And when I left Whidbey, I had a terrible ear infection that was only compounded by all of that pressure. So wait, what exactly happened? Oh, I was screaming as the plane was landing. Oh, you were literally screaming. Oh, I was literally screaming on the flight. It were, hurt that bad. Were you the only one screaming? Yeah. Okay, that's what that's got, a bad look the, right the there. Other, the, the other person, the other person sitting next to me going, "What's wrong with you?" I said, "I got an ear infection and this a few expletives really hurts." I mean, that's you a know, lot of times why babies are screaming. They just right. can't say, "My ears hurt." Okay. Anybody who knows, any, we have a lot of people in the area who obviously know a hell of a lot more about the airlines and uh, in flight than, 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 than I do or, or we do. So I always had this theory that some planes, the pressurization is different. Maybe. Because there have been times where I've been flying and absolutely no issues with my head whatsoever. Whether sure. it's, if it's I had sinuses or any of that, it, it, it was fine. Some planes I get on and it is completely different on the descent. The ascent is yeah. never a problem. 
but the descent. And I was like, is this because this is an Airbus? Is this because this is a prop plane? Is this because we're flying at a high altitude? It might have something to, to do with, you know, I mean, I, I'm, I'm have a to psycho. Do I, I have to have gum every time. But it might have to do with speed or the the angle that they're coming in, right? How fast they descend. Well, but it also, like, is the nose pointed further down? Like, you know, if it was shorter runway, that kind of thing. I don't know, but I'm going to try to. Because you're right. During the flight itself, I don't notice much difference, but certainly landing. And like you said, not not when we're taking off, but when we're landing, mm-hmm. if my ears are going to pop, that's going to be the moment. But they don't always do. So I'm just I mean, guessing. I think it's, yeah. I mean, it's look, it's going up and down, right? Right. That's why it's good to, like, untie your shoes. Leave them all. You don't have to take them off. Please leave them But on. you know what I mean? Because, like, your sure. ankle ankles swell up, like mm-hmm. this and that. So, I mean, it's definitely something. But, I mean, even if I drive over the pass, my ears will pop. Yeah, they do pop on the pass. And you're right. Like, when the baby's screaming on the plane, God, I wish that baby would shut up. Like, it, it started on pain. First of all, for whatever reason, I don't know what goes on with babies, but, like, they get ear infections, you know, like, every other day. Mm-hmm. Like just, that's why you have one of those little the little suction. Got a little there. suction thing so that I can see whatever's growing inside. It's kind of like the thing that you baste your turkey with, but it's a little, but a little mini one. Yeah. Do your, oh yeah, do your kids get ear infections? They I feel did like when, when I was they were th- infants, man. I'm t- I don't know what happens, and maybe it's just your body is still building its immunity or something, and everything goes to the ear. But like mm-hmm. between the ages of birth to about a year old. And it seems like, God damn, man, like right. another ear. And you begin to wonder if there's something wrong with your kid. But by like age two, it just. It just I, my daughter, even would. when I was a kid, but I, I feel like that their ages, like I would get them not all the time, but I feel like I'd get one at least once. Even a year. at like mm-hmm. ten to twelve, right? Yes, I mean I remember going to sleep specifically like on heating pads to try to get everything out of there because there was like honestly because there was like baseball the next day I wanted to do. My oh, daughter right. was uh, ten years old; she had her ears pierced. I, she probably had pierced ears for maybe a year before that, whatever mm-hmm. the deal is. And she's like, "Dad, my ear hurts," and I was like, "Well, on the inside." She's like, "No, right here on the lobe." So I grab the lobe. I I grab the lobe. Okay. And I look at the front, the front, like it's got a little black dot in the middle, like, you know, like anything else with an earring. Then I turn it over on the back and I look at the backside and it kind of has more of a green purplish look to it Uh. in the hole. So obviously that that, uh, lobe was infected. So when I grabbed the lobe, I realized it felt like there was like a uh, like a bean. Yeah, you can kind of feel it on the inside. It was really taut. So I was just like, so I looked at it. I was like, all right, hold on, baby. So I grabbed the, the whole lobe, and I just squeezed it. And all of a sudden, just all this pus and crap just went right in my face. Oh! Oh, yeah, because it was the angle. I was like, look, in, like, making sure. <laughs> it was just like, and she was like, oh. And then she was like, oh, Dad, the pain's gone. And I was like, yeah, you had a giant pus ball in there, man. Yeah, I'm going to go clean my face. Uh, I am going to wash this off. I've had that once, and it was the first time I got my ear pierced, it was... Uh, how do you describe it? Basically, it's a combination of Mad Dog, Ice Cube, Safety Pen, and Friends, right? Mm-hmm. And this is, you know, we put nice. Mad Dog on this because that's going to disinfect it and all. Look, it worked. I mean, I got my ear pierced, you know, and all that. But I think because of how we chose to do it, it got infected. It wasn't the end of the world, but same thing. You feel like felt like a hard pee right. in the lobe and the exact same thing. I had to squeeze it. And you're looking in the mirror. Mine sprayed on the mirror and it was still... So gross. I cannot imagine right. that hitting you in the face when it's not yeah. your own. When we were dirt poor, like 19, 20 years old, I got a planner wart on my foot, and I also had a wart somewhere on my finger. All right. My buddy knew he's like, I'll take care of it. So knew he had been branded before with uh, a coat hanger. Yeah. So he had like a, a W on a WV on his uh, on his on Volkswagen his shoulder. Sure. But he's like, dude, just you can get rewards this way. They they burn them off anyway. Yeah. So we get a candle. He, he gets a, he gets a coat hanger, and just jams this thing into the bottom of my foot. Oh, I mean, like it's, it's like you, you could you could see you could see the smoke coming off. How bad did it hurt? The first sting initially was bad. All right, mm. that goes away immediately. Really? Because you are so numb from the burn, like you cannot feel ah, it. Anymore. Okay. Also, a wart isn't really part of your body, so there's no nerves in it. Until you got to the bottom part of the planter wart where the seed was. Because because he had to keep going back to the candle to dig. Right. And I'm just like, all of a sudden I went, ah! <laughs> you reached the bottom. And there was basically a hole in the bottom of my heel. And this is back to going to the shower at the the athletic facility, ew, ew, the ew, gym ew. without any flip-flops on. There's a number of ways that this can happen. But, you know, like back in the day, I'd... I, I would shower after practice every day from, you know, the age of 13 on and just walk into a communal shower without flip-flops yeah, or anything else. And I guess that's a fairly common way to catch I it. I mean, I think just sports in general when you're that age. Oh, guaranteed. Because you get all fungy. Uh, you know what I mean? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> real funky. Real, real, real fungy. Real funky. Yeah. How did I hear figure into the story? 206-803-ROG. 
Hello, Dewey. Welcome to the men's room. Hello, gentlemen. I hope you're having a good day. Hola. Thank Hola. you. Appreciate yeah. it, man. So my story is I was taken over in Germany. I was backing out of a parking spot, had my head turned off to the back of the car, sneezed, and all of a sudden I got a cold sweat. I'm like, that's kind of weird. Drove to the other side of the base. I got out of my car and fell to the ground. So... <laughs> And after that, I got the massive spins, trying to stand up, got to call a friend to come pick me up, took me to the ER. I blew up in my middle ear when I sneezed so hard. Oh, God, right. And your ears are connected to balance. So basically, you prevented yeah. yourself from having balance because of the sneeze. Your ears are connected yeah. to your balance. Oh, absolutely, yeah. man. That's part of the reason. That. Yeah, so whatever. It kind of helps you with your own equilibrium, right? So they say like when you're boxers a lot of times you tag the guy in the ear a lot of times they drop and it's not it's not because you jolted the brain so much but for that second that you hit it all sense of balance is gone huh so d gravity just right yeah i'm, so I'm so surprised, surprised that doesn't happen no more happen to baseball players who get drilled in the side of the head even where the hole is you know what i mean just you would think that would if you get hit in the side of the head i'm telling you, they're gonna lose their balance because luckily that, that i don't know i mean much. i feel like if i see somebody catch a f ball to the head they generally go down yeah. yeah, but they get back up sometimes, you know, so... No, no you'll I, get back up, but the thing is, like, you literally lose all sense of balance. So you, you take this impact in the right spot in the ear, and, I mean, you're just going to fall. There's, like, nothing you can do. Even even huh. if it didn't hurt, I mean, it's going to hurt, but even if you had no pain, right? you still just drop. So, yeah, yeah. your ears are connected hmm. very much to I, the balance. I do. Right, and it's different from, like, a wearing a helmet and a baseball hitting Correct. Something. You know what I mean? you got to talk about a punch. and he's, It's got to hit you at an exact spot. But if it does... Or a sneeze. Or a sneeze, apparently. Or a sneeze. Well, it's like, remember, when people get hit on the button, it's not, it's, it's, it's that their head snaps. Right. Yeah. You cut yeah. off everything yeah. and just, yeah. you're out. We have a very uh, special announcement concerning the Men's Room World Tour and stop number four coming up for you about 420, 425. In the meantime, our question, how did an ear figure into the story? 206-803-ROCK. 99.9 KISW. The Men's Room returns with Miles and Thrill. Our question, how did an ear figure into the story? 206-803-ROCK. Uh, somebody here, Miles, we were talking about the, the guy who sneezed. Mm -hmm. Kind of blew out his ear, lost his balance. We're talking about your ears are kind of responsible for your equal. Equilibrium, it says your middle ear has fluid in it and little hairs which check the level. It's basically like a bubble level for construction. Shake the fluid up and your brain can't tell which way is up or down. Oh, all right. So, all right. There's the explanation. Uh, another one from the text says, I used to work at a vet clinic and there was a hound dog that would come in regularly and always had such horribly infected ears that it was difficult to be in the exam room with him. He ended up having to get a double total ear canal ablation where they basically cut out the entire ear. Ear then they sew it shut. Yeah, basically. Yeah, I, I had a dog that uh, ear infections were so bad that uh, both ears were were sewn shut. Uh, Honey, but on the same token, so she, she could hear. No, so she, she could she, hear. She could hear, but they sewed them shut just to prevent of, the infection. Prevent the infection. Could you smell the infection because they add absolutely, infection. especially with a hound dog. They have big floppy ears. It's very right. hard for any air to get in there. Oh. So any kind of, especially when you're talking about like a basset hound. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Or something that has just overly massive ears compared to their, their head size. How did an ear figure into the story? 206-803-ROCK. Hello, Alicia. Welcome to the Mint Room. Hola. Hola. So when I was uh, like uh, up until like my age of 13, I had ear infections every month, two, three, four. It was so frequent. I was on medication all the time. What causes them? Do you know? Um, for myself, I have no clue. It was just all the time. Um, maybe stress, maybe my environment. I, I okay. didn't swim often, so I didn't get that. Okay. Um, but the frequency was a concern for my elementary school that they threatened to call CPS on me. Really? Wow. Yeah. Um, but I never felt the pain until it was severe. So my parents didn't know until it was bad. Right, right, right. That, good point, good point. So what did they do? Uh, think, th thankfully nothing happened, but it was just th this, the whole idea of a threat was just panic for my parents. Oh, sure. Yeah. And well, you said this is basically like birth to the age of about 13? Yeah. And how are your ears now? Um, a lot better. Um, unfortunately, though, because of so much medication I was on all those years, I am now allergic to one of the medications. All right. Huh. Well, Damn. hopefully they've got a new one. Typically, they, they come up with something a little bit different. Well, that's always a dicey question when you go to the doctor, man, because it's a, 
we're going to do this, this, and this, these procedures. Are you allergic to any of these things? I'm like, brother, I don't know. I have no idea. We're going to find out together. Because like, you're rattling off products where I've never heard of this stuff. This is medical stuff. I don't know if I'm allergic. And then it always crosses my mind when they start injecting you like, man, oh, man, I hope I'm not allergic. And then if I am allergic, how bad is the reaction? Like, hives, I can deal with. Am I going to have anaphylactic freaking shock? Like, how bad is the allergy? Because I know my wife, is, is it sulfa? I don't know what sulfa is, but I know that if you go to the hospital, every once in a while, they have to use sulfa for something, mm. and they always ask her, and that's the one thing, she's like, I'm allergic to sulfa. So I asked her, man, how did you find out how you were allergic to sulfa? She said, when I didn't know I was allergic to sulfa, they gave me sulfa, and like I just had a that's nightmare. I tell the doctor so. every time. Are yeah. you allergic to anything? Ah, we're going to find out. I don't know. Because it hasn't happened yet. So Dude, I've not- been on a medicine for like three months now, and I went to a different doctor, and they were like, so you haven't had a reaction? I was like... Uh, I didn't know there was going to be reactions. So I guess I'm okay. And they were like, oh, yeah, this, this, this. If they'd have told you that, you'd have been, you know, like on a I different I would have been looking and, for yeah, it. Exactly. Yeah. So they just expect or... you to have a reaction if you're I, taking this medication. Not that I, she was just like, you haven't had any reactions. And I was like, I didn't know. Nobody gave me a warning when they prescribed it to me. Did she tell you what to look out for? Like, yes. Okay. Like, and I don't have any of that. So I feel okay. better. I did All have right. an uh, ear infection at one point in time. And I went in and uh, I don't know if it was the equivalent of like a hydrogen peroxide. Where it basically felt like someone poured a Sprite in my ear. Oh, just a <laughs> and I Go, like it was just like eating whatever was yeah. there. You know? And then I turned my head to the side and all the crap came out. God. Yeah. How did I hear figuring the story? 206 803 Rock. Hello, Ian. Welcome to the men's room. Hola. Hola. So I have one of those, only one, but one of those elf ears you guys were talking about earlier. I just happen to have one, not two. Would you prefer to have both of them be elf ears or just have the one? You know, I've done pretty well with the one. I think I'll stick with one. Does it has it created a lot of good conversation for you? Yeah, well, that yeah, that's kind of the story. So, I mean, it was a nickname. Everybody, you, you can't not see it. So, growing up, it used to get comments all the time, and uh, so I decided. This is back in high school. I decided to pierce the top, the point, so to speak. Yeah, might as well. Yeah, and uh, did you pierce uh, it with it like a hurt. charm? Was it lucky? Oh. <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. I put a rainbow on it. Yeah. All right. All right. Yeah. All no, right. no, a general, a standard stud. You know, the metal, the stainless steel stud. But uh, it hurt a little bit more than I thought it would when I got it done. I had my lobes done and everything, so I got that one done. And uh, I also was a wrestler, so I. There was one time I was messing around with my friends, and this was like maybe a week after getting it pierced, and he kind of, you know, we were sort of fooling around wrestling. He shot in, tried to hook my head. Well, his palm landed right on the ear. And it hit hard and it hurt bad. And it was like, oh, okay, I'm done. I'm done. By that night, it ha- the pain was unbearable. It was, I mean, I couldn't sleep. It was keeping me up. It was brutal. I was also crashing at my buddy's house that night. And, you know, he saw me kind of up at two in the morning. And I, you know, he said, what's up? I told him what's up. He said, well, let me go get my dad. His dad was a paramedic. So his dad comes in, he says, what's going on? I said, uh, you know, right up on the earring, Brian got me earlier. It's, you know, it, it hurts like hell. His dad looks at it and he goes, where's the earring? Oh. And I, it was just like, yeah, I was like, it, it's still, it's up there. I can feel it. I can feel the point on the back of my head. My ear had swollen up and totally engulfed the stud. Oh, God. Wow. Yeah, so... It, yeah, he ended up clipping the back of it with a pair of wire cutters and tried to push it through the front, which didn't work. So I had to go to the hospital and get it surgically removed. So now, not only do I have an elf ear, but I've got a scar on the tip of it, as though <laughs> like I did that, I did that on purpose. Hmm. Wow. I Man, so, I think that looks. That would seem cooler. You think? Yeah. I don't know. I, mean, I, will, gotta, tell, I, mean, I will. I will tell you, it's not cooler. Everybody <laughs> asks. Did you have right. that done? No, I didn't have one ear made into an elf ear. Okay. All right. People actually ask you that all the time. Actually, mm-hmm. I'd probably ask you that as well. Uh, what, what, uh, Hannah, r- random question. Has it ever helped with a Halloween costume? Ooh, good call. Oh, you know, it hasn't, but that might be my costume choice. Dude, Mr. I, Spock, I lucky into it. Yeah. yeah, Elf, yeah. Elf, even. I mean, it's built right in, man. You know, look, if I, I, I splash probably, hot I grease... I should lean into it a bit. You might as well. Embrace I mean, it. Right, 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 you got exactly. it pierced. You might as well just own it. I mean, look, if I get splashed in the face with hot grease, my Halloween costume, hi, I'm Seal. How did I hear figure into the story? 206-803-ROCK. Well, I mean, what else would I do? Who else could I be? Right? 
I'm a bald black dude. You know, grease splashes in your face, man. They, they can't get rid of the burn scars. So yeah, I'm seal. You could be the long lost uh, Marvel hero, the birthmark. <laughs> oh damn, that's what that was. I had a buddy that I, I mean, seriously, I used to know a guy in Baltimore, and he same thing. His face was all red stuff, but it it was a birthmark. But the way it looked. Is like I saw him get cut off once when we walked into a bar. The guy's like, "You're oh, he just looked like he was he's just he just looks like he's beat red sometimes because it wasn't always as bad. But like as the day went on, or if he was out in the sun, it would it would show up big time. <laughs> the birthmark. I'm just thinking, if you are a superhero and they call you the birthmark, like there's nothing attractive about you. The birthmark. If you say, hey, "Man, you're gonna meet my buddy," uh, it goes by the nickname the birthmark. Like. In my mind, it's going to be the weirdest looking person I've ever seen. In my well, it's life. also the first thing you notice when your kid comes out if they have a predominant one. Well, you want my daughter has hers on the bottom of her foot, and I can't remember where my son's is, but it's not. It's very unimpressive. Right, right. Yeah. And do they? I feel like they just leave. Like when I was a kid, I felt like I could find mine. I don't know if I could anymore. Where was it? Somewhere on my leg. Mine was somewhere on my. Oh, it's under the turtle somewhere down. Oh yeah, down. maybe I just got hairy. That might be it. <laughs> How did it here figure into the story? 206-803-ROCK. Hello, Steve. Welcome to the men's room. Hola. Hola. So about uh, 2009-ish, Aaron, you know, I was living in Auburn, and I took a motorcycle ride and stopped at some random lake. Went to go jump off on the, just jump off the dock a few inches off the water, tore my eardrum. Ooh, how did you tear your eardrum? I'm guessing it's just the way the water shot into my ear because ah. I dove in. Still and then, it? uh... Go ahead. Go ahead. Was it instant pain? Did you know instantly that something had gone wrong? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah, instantly it hurt, and then uh, I swam in circles for probably about 30 seconds because I couldn't find the dock. You just couldn't figure out. Okay, back to the equilibrium. Thing. Right. Yeah. So, yeah, because my equilibrium was off. And uh, so I sat on the dock and tried to, it felt like there was water in my ears. So I tried doing all the tricks to get the water out of your ear and nothing nothing worked. And then I'm like, all right, well, I'm going to go home. Well, I had to wear a helmet on my motorcycle. And, and you're driving I, a motorcycle. Thinking, so that's, that's, that's going to be a little bit more right. problematic with your equilibrium. Actually, I was I was fine after a little bit sitting on the dock, but it was the pain that hurt the worst. That was like the worst because um, I had to go over a bunch of rolling hills and the pressure of having my helmet on. Oh God! How long was your it ride? Was probably about twenty thirty minutes. All right, and I'm assuming you went to the hospital. No, you know I was in my early twenties, so I decided to you know Tough take a couple out. hydros and have a beer and. <laughs> And then, you know, like a genius 20-year-old, rode my motorcycle to work the next day and then actually had to go home from work and then went to urgent care. And what did they tell you? Just said, you said what, you ripped it? Yeah, it was just like a minuscule, cheer, uh, minuscule tear on my eardrum, but enough just to kind of mess with everything. So I had to take antibiotics for like a couple of weeks. Okay. Man, you just can't mess with your ears. You know I've I mean? heard of people slamming their head into uh, the water while water skiing and having a similar experience of r- right. r- rupturing an eardrum. Yeah. God. Yeah, no, that. thank you. How did an ear figure into the story? 206-803-ROCK. Hello, Tom. Welcome to the men's room. Hello, Tom. Tom. Tommy. 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 We'll try him in a minute. Hello, Matt. Welcome to the men's room. Hola. 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 So when I was about five, my parents had a, uh, a honeybee hive, and I had a bee fly directly into my ear. Mm. And so did, it didn't. Did, did it sting you there? No, I, I, I mean I don't remember most of it, but according to my mom, no, it didn't sting me. I just ran around crazy for a long time until she could figure out that it was stuck directly in my ear with a stinger sticking out. Oh, so it went in head first. The stinger's hanging yep. out. Of- so what do you do to remove a beer, uh, bee that's stuck in the kid's ear? I, I think she just used a pair of tweezers. All right. So, know, I wonder what, the, what is the mechanism that makes a bee want to sting you or not? I got stung on uh, on Sunday in the stomach. Oh, you're depend- just a douche. I, I think it depends on the bee, but I think like bumblebees, it's just like if you startle them or you get too close to them. Okay. All right. Do bumblebees sting? 
Yeah, you never got stung by a bee? The big by ones? A bum- bee, bumblebees, yes. Bumblebees, not a bumblebee. Bumblebees are the big ones. I've been stung by bees, but never a bumblebee. Like a yellow jacket will sting you. What's the, what's the little one you see everywhere? But that's your average honeybee yes, or honey whatever. Yeah, that the, was a bumblebee. The bumblebees are the big, fat, kind of fuzzy right, ones. Fuzzy. Look oh, like they can't fly. They look it's like, like a, a drunk pilot. Look like a caterpillar. Oh, yeah. then I guess they got stung by a honeybee. Yeah, they probably got stung by a honeybee. I know that uh, what, something about bananas, something about the smell or the pheromones or something of bananas makes them absolute lunatics. The last time I got stung, I had a banana with breakfast. They do. Oh, that makes sense. Yeah, yeah seriously. seriously that, and it was right out, it was right out front of work. I, I, I saw I don't, dude. It I was makes a, bees go crazy. I, I don't know what a, it is. I was on a golf course, and uh, two guys were getting absolutely lit up by these bees. And there were, there were 10, 12 of them. All right. and, and I'm standing there like, what is going on? And they, they jumped in their cart. They got off the green. They took the hell off to the next tee box, and those bees followed them. Oh, yeah. And it was because of the bananas. They were eating bananas in the golf course. I had never heard of that before. I, I had found never this out heard like about that. three years ago. And I'm like, wait, what? And they're like, man, I do not know what it is. And no one's really been able to explain it. But I, I, there's something to do with the smell or something. But man, like, they get absolutely enraged. It's their alarm pheromone. Is that what it is? Okay. Right. So, so like, generally when, it, when, they're, right, when they're angry and stuff, that, that goes off in their head. So I guess the bananas somehow set that off. And they just, you're right, they lose it. My wife, too. She really hates bananas. I think she's part B. Huh. It's the way it's or a fisherman. A fisherman. What a fisherman. Yeah, remember, it's bad luck. You shouldn't have bananas on boats. I, did, I have no idea about this. There's a lot of banana stuff. Yeah, you're not allowed to bring a banana on a boat, period. I only know it because we've talked to listeners on this show about it. About bringing a banana on a boat. Then yeah. Why would they call a banana boat a banana boat? Like, if that's bad luck, call it's it something. It's the style of the Well, boat. banana boats are shaped like bananas. I understand. Right? I would go cucumber boat something, man. Saying if it's bad luck, don't name a style of boat after the one thing that you don't want on a boat. People in boats, they get a lot of weird stuff. What, as far as? Superstitions. Okay. Like, you can never rename a boat. So if I bought your boat, that's the name of the boat. You can, but it's a process. Really? It might be a process, but from what I understand, it's not good luck. So you could paint over it, name it whatever you want. No, but that's the thing. I think if you do it, you gotta, like, you gotta, like, Register it or no? It's not. It's like you gotta. I don't know. You can't just paint over it and be like, all right, now it's the miles. You know what I mean? You gotta like. Th- th- there's like a process. You gotta take it. You gotta do it properly and correctly. And then in the superstitious world, right? And then like hit it with the champagne again. Like you gotta go through a whole process. That's is what that- I'm saying. This <laughs> seems. This is more superstitious than baseball to me. <laughs> Being a boat it player, is. You know. But boats sink. I was going to so, say, they have reason to be well, superstitious. Well, careers are lost in Major League Baseball, too. Sometimes <laughs> Not their even, lives. You can't even get the ball to first base. You know? <laughs> Not their lives. That's correct. That's why I'm like, boat people, keep those weird superstitions. Now, somebody's saying it's not bees, it's wasps. They get freaked out by bananas. These were bees. These were bees attacking these guys. It's I literally on. Googled bees and bananas. Apparently, the alarm pheromone smells a bit like banana. Mm-hmm. Yeah, then somebody here says that when you kill a bee, it gives off a scent similar to a banana. Oh, so maybe it looks at you as like you're a giant bee killer. Either way, hmm. don't eat bananas around bees. What if you had a shirt on that just had a picture of a banana? Can I get on a boat then? Ooh. Uh, so I've got, I don't know, a velvet underground shirt on or something. <laughs> you know, with I mean, a you banana. Know, yeah. I mean, is, there, is there some, the if Chiquita I'm, banana lady. If I'm real superstitious. What if I have a tattoo of one? Chain, if you had a tattoo, you can't get on my boat, man. It's not a banana. It's just a tattoo of a banana. I know, but you can't get on my boat. What if I brought a picture of a banana on the boat? <laughs> Onto the boat. And just hung it in the Are we fishing or just cruising around? It doesn't seem to matter. I think it, I think I think it, it goes f- all around, doesn't it? Well, if you're fishing, no chance. I, I wouldn't even let you on the boat with that banana shirt. You would not. But if you're cruising around, it's bad hit, luck. Yeah. If we're just cruising around, all right, <laughs> banana boy. What about in Florida? I got a banana boat, you know, suntan lotion shirt on. It still says banana. Probably I would let you on that. I think that in the if bank. it says banana, I would let you on the boat. If it's the image of a banana, I would not. What if I'm wearing a banana hammock when I'm fishing? This is the thing with that. I wouldn't know you have it until something goes wrong with a boat. Be like, all right, which one of you sons of bitches is wearing a banana hammock? It's me. It's Miles. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Hello, Tom. Welcome to the men's room. Hola, guys. Hola. Hola. Sorry, earlier you, uh, you threw me. My name's Bob, so... Oh, oh got you, Bob. Sorry. That explains a lot. Hello, Bob. Welcome to the men's room. <laughs> so I'm 11 years old. We're living in Germany. Me and my brother are jumping up and down on the bed. Parents always tell you not to do that, of course. We hear mom coming, so we jump off the bed. Well, when I jump off the bed, I land against the door that enters my bedroom, the door handle of that bedroom was held on by a nail that was bent 
to a 90 degree angle. Uh -oh. And as I slide down the door, that nail grabs the back of my hair and almost rips it completely off. Ooh. Okay. So, so my it, mom's not worried it, about it, us it, jumping it, on the bed anymore. Yeah, I was going to say, I bet you stopped jumping yeah. on the bed. Is it hanging by a thread? It is. It is. And uh, almost completely ripped it off. So she wraps the towel around my head, drives me to the hospital. She says that she's never seen so much blood in all her life. And we went to the hospital constantly. We had three boys. <laughs> Everybody got stitches, right? So it was pretty bad. But all the kids out there don't jump on the bed. No, that's why I took no. my daughter to the hospital the first time. Hey, guys, stop jumping on the bed. Then finally, like, just let them jump on the bed. They got to learn somehow. Sure enough, mm -hmm. sun comes running out. Some bad happens. Go in there, and sure enough, she hit the metal corner of the frame of the bed, butts in the back of her head open. It's like, this is what we're trying to tell But not we're everybody not has a trampoline. Like, I used to do it in hotel rooms. I'd bounce from, you know, bed to bed. From bed to bed. Hotel, I don't queens. care. And then also, in our era, most of the beds had box springs, and they were pretty springy. Yes, they were very springy. So depending on your weight and your age, like, I would jump on the bed, and my grandfather would take a, a pillow and knock the legs out from under me when I'm up in the air, and I'd go flying and land on my back or whatever. And I thought it was the greatest thing. It was one of the funnest. That, that's all I wanted him to do. It is. I mean, when you're a kid, you it's don't great. have a trampoline. Most, you know. Most yeah, when I can pick up my kid, just grab them and throw them onto the bed, you know, from like ten feet away, then come back for more. And yeah, I knew it was dangerous, but I never, I never missed the bed. That was the whole thing. And the important thing is, like, you can't tell your mom. Right? If you want to keep doing this, she I don't cannot doubt, know. I don't think you would miss the bed. I would just worry about them ricocheting, yeah, bouncing off. And <laughs> yeah, else. Sure, exactly. <laughs> we have a, uh, a very special announcement concerning the Men's Room World Tour and stop number four. <laughs> Coming up along with your emails to the men's room at KISW.com net. If you're updating your closet for summer, you need dependable clothes that you can wear anywhere, whatever you're doing. And for that, you can look to American Giant. American Giant makes clothing of exceptional quality for people who want something more than the status quo offers. Whether you need to re-up on reliable everyday t-shirts, pick up a solid pair of shorts, or invest in a pair of durable jeans, American Giant is a better choice. They make everything right here in the USA, from start to finish. So when you buy from American Giant, you become part of creating jobs and improving local communities in towns and cities all across the country. And keeping things local ensures the kind of quality you'll feel and appreciate for years to come. Shop your new summertime closet staples at American-Giant.com and get 20% off your order when you use code WA23 at checkout. That's 20% off at American-Giant.com with promo code WA23. Have you or a loved one been injured in an accident? Are you struggling to recover fair compensation? Look no further. At Phillips Law Firm, the experienced personal injury attorneys will fight for your rights and get you the justice and compensation you deserve. They handle a wide range of cases, including car accidents, slip and falls, medical malpractice, and workplace injuries. Justice is a phone call away, so don't wait. Call today for a free case review. Call 1-800-JUSTICE or visit justiceforyou.com. For 25 years, Stamps.com has made mailing and shipping easy. All you need is a computer and printer. Imagine mailing and shipping right from your desk, anytime. No traffic, no waiting, no hassle. Plus, Stamps.com gives you discounts up to 84%. Sign up for Stamps.com today. Use code PROGRAM for a four-week trial, plus postage and a digital scale. That's Stamps.com, code PROGRAM. What's up? It's your boy, the Ted Smith from the Men's Room. And did you know I have a podcast? Well, I do. The Podcast. New episodes uploaded every Wednesday on the Odyssey app. The debauchery rolls on. You're listening to the Men's Room with Miles and Thrill. 99.9 KISW. Who sucks less? Uh, coming up a first time for a few emails from the Men's Room at KISW.com. You've got me. But before we get to the emails, oh. a very special announcement. Concerning the Men's Room World Tour, we have made the date stop number four. Bachelas, where are we headed? We are headed to Ballard and Mike's Chili Parlor, Sunday, August the 13th, from 3 until 6. As we'll be hanging out at Mike's Chili Bowl, 
which is their whole party facility in the back. Yes, indeed. So there's a stage back there for our band that's playing, Stone Evergreen Travelers. Awesome. They'll have a they uh, are man, awesome. They are awesome. giant grill hooking up the Uli's famous Men's Room Original Sausage. All right. Beer will be flowing featuring Elysian Men's Room Original Ale. And Both yes, in and out of you. The Men's Room Roasted Red Salsa from San Juan Salsa Company. It's going to be a great day, man. That is a great spot. I've partied back there two or three times. I've partied inside. I have not partied in the in the back part yet, but it's, what, August 13th, so a Sunday. chances are the weather's going to be outstanding. I was there last summer. It was great. Oh, that's Ted, right. uh, hopefully you can talk uh, Mike into setting up the cornhole and all that stuff, too. Right, you know, Michael set it up. Hell yeah, man. It, it, I, you say that with confidence. It is a great space, and uh, we'll have the sausage there for you to eat, the chips and the salsa, of course, and uh, the Men's Room Original Ale. It, man, it's absolutely free. You just have to be 21 years of age or older to get in. And here's the thing that makes it fun. You. Honestly, oh, yeah. God, people yeah. look at me, thank you for doing this. Like, bro, if you're having fun, it's because you're a fun person to be with. We, have, we show up. And we drink, and we'll talk to whoever's there. It doesn't matter to us. But, like, if you have a good time, it's because you created a good time. Yeah, man. Uh, and Mike's is a great spot. Now, the main uh, restaurant in Mike's will not be open during the event. Everything's going to be out back because Mike is typically not open on Sunday. Okay. So he's I didn't know that. He's hooking us up and doing us a favor well, to let wait, us go wait, there and party. Why do we keep doing this to people? All right. So, our, on stop three, we're at, uh, what, Tony V's? Mm-hmm. Stop two. two. That was stop two. Yeah. It was on a Sunday. And Tony V was there. It's cool. He was a really nice guy. But Miles asked him directly, hey, man. Are we making you work today? He's like, yeah. Normally, I'm right. not here on Sundays. Yeah. So Mike's isn't normally open on Sundays, but we're going to go there and have them open on a Sunday. They got the uh, who the, else wants a day the, where they're right. closed and we can make you come to work with a lot of people drinking beer? Exactly on short notice. On short the, notice, yeah, all those things. So and we want to uh, make you work so we can all party. Well, Mike's been uh, wanting to do a party for a while. We just had not got the date nailed down and everything. Right. Else. So right. we finally got all that together. So it's going to be Sunday, August the thirteenth, from three until six. It's Mike's Chili Bowl in the back of Mike's Chili Parlor. You'll see it's easy to get into. There's it a is. set of steps on the on the left side of the building. You'll see the guy working the door, checking IDs and everything. Everything else. So sure. It's absolutely free, 21 and older. And of course, uh, music from our buddies in the Stoned Evergreen Travelers. They played a couple of our events, uh, Misha and yeah. the band. You got a stand up bassist, man. They, uh, she keeps telling me, you got to do your stand up bass. I have a stand up bass. Right? It, man. And as a bass player, I can kind of play the stand up bass, but the chick in this band, that's what she plays and plays it so well. I'm like, look, the reason I don't want to play it, at least live, is because people like you play it and the thing is, I'll look stupid. Like, when I play at home, it's fine. You know, people, oh, this sounds pretty good. But when you watch her play, I'm like, right, you play stand-up bass like a stand-up bassist. Yep. So I am not going to play live because I'm just going to say, you kind of suck, man. Hey, look, weather's going to be perfect, man. It's, it's going to yeah, be no, a great is. Sunday. Uh, we're at August 13th from 3 until 6 in the afternoon, man. It's going to be a, a great afternoon. Mike's Chili uh, Parlor and Ballard. By the way, if you ever get a chance to stop in there when they're open, food's fantastic. And you might see Miles. It is a great bar. <laughs> I, was, I was in there last night. I know. I was in there last night, man. Mike's got, uh, he, uh, every once in a while, he'll send me a text and he'll say it's, it's, uh, it's uh, Friar night. And basically, you know, every few weeks, he changes the oil in his fryer. Sure. Now, typically, that's reserved for French fries and for the delicious queso, because he makes his chips fresh. Oh, nice. That uh, that he throws in there. So, no, you know, there's no fish in there or anything like that to ruin the oil. But the night before he changes the oil, we go in there, like last night was... What did you uh, take? What well, did you bring with you? Uh, I did uh, I did uh, Old Bay chicken wings. All I right. marinated them in a dry rub for a day and a half. Uh, brought those down there. They were fantastic. We had risotto and mushroom and cheese balls. Ooh. We had barbecue. We had deep Do you fat. guys all share? Does it become pot? Oh, yeah. No, you okay. just get everybody gets one one thing. We had coconut shrimp. Oh. Uh, we had deep fried ribs. How was that, man? I've the never ribs had... were great. They crisp up on the outside, oh. man, and the juice they Yeah, I mean, that just sounds I kind of wish I had not asked The risotto and it. mushroom balls were absolutely fantastic. Mini corn dogs with, like, the tiny wieners that Ted likes, but then wrapped the in... Cocktail the, weenies. The cocktail weenies, but done in a... Tiny corn, wieners. A cornbread. That little smokies. Little smokies, but Jesus. done with cornbread. Elf penis. Yeah. yeah, they're mini corn dogs. You can get mini corn dogs a lot of places. Yeah, yeah. Well, they were they were there last night. Actually, I got uh, mini they're corn all home, They're all homemade, so people are bringing in their oh. own stuff. Yeah. And uh, mini corn dogs recently, I was... Uh, me and the wife were out with Robin on Saturday night, right? We're at Poor Decisions in Ballard, and uh, I'm looking at the menu, and I'm like, man, they got mini corn dogs. So I asked one of the guys who, who owns the place, I go, man, how many cor- mini corn dogs do I get per order? 
And he said, I'm going to be honest with you, man. The scientific terminology is a heap. Mm, yeah. <laughs> and he was right. So we got uh, a heap. Homemade, yeah. uh, uh, homemade lumpia or lumpia? Lumpia. 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 That, 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 that was good, too. Lumpia is so good. It was. It was fan- It was kind of an egg roll shape. It was fantastic. Where did your wings rate with all the... Because all these people... Are, cause, look, you were going there confident. Like, I got Old Bay wings, mm-hmm. but there's so many deep fried ribs. Like, you just got knocked down a peg. Oh, yeah. No, without question. And then I went down to uh, Trader Joe's and picked up some grape juice, and we started making transfusions. <laughs> so it was a good night. Oh, nice. Yeah. <laughs> Men's Room World Tour Stop number four happens Sunday, August the 13th from 3 until 6 at Mike's Chili Parlor and Mike's Chili Bowl in the back. In Ballard, we'll have the Men's Room Original Ale, the Uli's Famous uh, Men's Room Original Sausage, and Men's Room Roasted Red Salsa from our friends at the San Juan Salsa Company. Keep in mind, if you pick up any of those products in any of your retail locations that you find, a portion of the proceeds benefit our friends at the Fisher House. So basically, yes. you're going there and you're giving money to charity. And then, of course, the Stoned Evergreen Travelers are going to play for us as well. And it's absolutely free if you're 21 or older. We should move on to the birthday request before you run out of time for Who Sucks Less. Guys, I want to give a birthday shout out to my twin boys, Tough and Cash. For their seventh trip around the sun, damn good boys, respectful, polite, love your show. For them, can I get a few of their favorites? A suck it up cupcake, green beans, and some of Thrill's shotgun gets. And maybe Coach Ted giving advice on how to make the best out of second grade. Listen to you guys, you make the 167 shovel much more enjoyable. Rock on, fellas. That from Dad and Brantley. So suck it up, cupcake. Green beans, green beans. Green bean. Get. Get. Tough. Get. Cash. Get. Go Get. <laughs> Second grade. All right, you made it through kindergarten and first grade. You're basically done. Now I'm getting with you. <laughs> Second grade's going to be a lot. Number one, we're going to read. Now we're going to have to do a lot of reading. It's going to be a little tougher. We're going to have to sound out words. People will help you with that. Just make sure you know the difference between a C and an S sound or a CH. Coach Ted still struggles with that. He's 42. Gentlemen and uh, Taryn, today is my stepdaughter's 11th life anniversary. She is all we could ask for. Biggest heart of anyone I know and a budding chef, karate student, our dog's best play friend, and sharp as a tack. When I get a little smart with her, she fires right back with the right amount of sarcasm and attitude. <laughs> Not be talking back, but just joining the smarty pants banter. I love this little lady with all our hearts. How about a Leroy Jenkins and a little kid face sandwich? Love y'all and keep on rocking that from mom, dad, and the grandparents. Let's do this. Leroy Jenkins! Gentlemen, love the show. Thank you for bringing it to us every day. We'd like to wish our friend Andrea a very happy birthday. She's obviously smarter than the rest of us as she took this uh, week off. So could she please get a backwards fart? Miles, maybe give her an uh, inspirational thought. Uh, that's from Andrea's best friends at PSNS, the USS Pennsylvania Project Team. <laughs> All right, Andrea, think about this. Don't you hate it when you offer someone a sincere compliment? Like, hey, man, that's a really nice mustache you have. (laughs) Then all of a sudden, she's not your friend anymore. (laughs) But all this day is my buddy James, his 51st birthday. Going to get some words of wisdom from Miles and the captain telling him what he should do now that his last child has finally been launched. Thanks, guys. That from Jeremy, the tax guy. <clears throat> All right, James, think about this. It's kind of fun one to do if you spend time with the kitchen. Sometimes, I just keep my potato masher in the kitchen drawer. Because it's fun not to be able to open that drawer sometimes. You guys never have that problem? Mm-hmm. Oh, with a potato masher? Yeah, yeah, yeah of course. Can't open the door. No. It's like... Ooh, well, ahoy there. Now that the last child's been launched, what should you do? Uh, if you're like the Quaker Oats man, you go on a three-week cocaine bender mixed with methamphetamine. And it was during this time that he pierced his nipples and got his back tattoo. He also punched your can Sam in the beak over a gambling debt that we didn't know he had. I wouldn't say to do that, but it was a hell of a lot of fun. But it's up to you, Grunge Bags. And finally, for the birthdays, guys, love listening to you guys. Can you please give a happy 59th birthday to Renee and Shelton? 
She would like to hear some turtle sex for uh, Gertie and the sexy Germans talking about motorcycles and rocking my drums. Thank you guys so much, and you guys rock that from the lovely Renee. Yeah, I like to rock your drums. Anytime that I can beat the skins, I'm all about it. As far as riding a motorcycle, I'll tell you what, tonight I'll offer you another hog to hop on. Yeah, it's funny. To certain parts of Germany, mainly in Berlin, which they call me the motorcycle. Mm. <laughs> Actually, they call me VW, the vaginal warrior. Yeah, they also wear, I wear a special helmet. Mm. <laughs> All right, guys, here you go. Happy, happy, happy birthday. Happy, happy, happy birthday. Happy, happy, happy birthday to you, to you, to you. Yaws of Dirty Germans brought to you by Men's Room Original Sausage. Available through Uli's world famous sausage, mensroomlive.com, and other fine retailers. Mmm, uh, Schweinefly. Now, the Men's Room wants to know Who Sucks Last? Yay, time for Who Sucks Last. Tina Trill, who you bring us three stories from the uh, news every week? They all suck. It's up to us to determine out of these three stories. Which one sucks the least? Now, if you happen to follow KISW on Facebook and Twitter, the debate is already underway on Who Sucks Less. Yes, indeed. Like I said, we have, uh, you know, like you said, three stories. Two of these will deal with what I call bad parenting. I think you'll agree. And one of them is just uh, no rest for the wicked, as it were. So let us start in England, where an innocent man who served 17 years behind bars for a rape that he did not commit, he may now have to pay thousands of dollars to the prison for board and lodgings. So 57-year-old Andrew Malkinson, he was found guilty of raping a woman in 2003. The following year, he was jailed for life with a minimum term of seven years, and he served 10 more years behind bars because he maintained his innocence. So Mr. Malkinson's conviction ended up getting squashed after DNA evidence leaked another man to the crime that he was accused. However, he has now revealed that he may have to pay for the cost of food and accommodation, if you want to call it that, while he was behind bars. It's understood that this has been a standard practice in a miscarriage of justice cases since the Criminal Appeal Act of 1995. Basically, that came into force. Uh, when it came into force, money had to be deducted from whatever compensation he receives for wrongful imprisonment. You follow me? So, mm -hmm. Ted, I locked you up for 10 years. That My bad. Sanity. Turns out you're not responsible, but you now owe the prison food for money and quote-unquote accommodations for the 10 years that you were there. And when you say accommodations, I'm going to say 99% of everyone I've ever met would prefer different accommodations. That, as opposed to being in jail. Anyway, he says, but he spent 10 years uh, behind bars because he maintained his innocence and it took an extremely heavy toll on that's his ridiculous. mental health. That's ridiculous. And Yeah, I mean, but that's the whole idea. So, And he would have gotten out sooner if he had pled guilty. So think about this. He stayed in jail because he's trying to fight for his innocence. And then as a result of proving that he was correct, the jail now says, hey, sorry about the lockup, but you owe us for 10 years of feeding you and imprisoning you. Good Even times. though we were in the wrong. Good yeah. times. So there's that. Now let's go to bad parenting. A Missouri City woman, she's been charged with evading arrest, child endangerment, and fraud after she used her 14-year-old daughter as a shield to protect her from police after a high-speed chase. 35-year-old Tanisha <laughs> Henry, she was chased by cops for 25 miles at speeds of about 100 miles an hour. And the officers had been responding to a theft call. Well, the pursuit ended in a parking lot after Henry ran out of gas. She gets out of the vehicle, walks around the car, opens the passenger side door, grabbed her daughter out of the passenger side, took her out of the car, where she then put her in a chokehold and put her between her and law enforcement. One of the officers at the scene said, quote, at that point, I 100% believed that we had a hostage situation, adding that police at the time did not know that the crying girl was her daughter. Quote, I distinctly remember her at times saying, shoot, shoot me, shoot us, things of that nature. It was very high intensity. It can be a very dangerous situation. And to put your own family member, not to mention your daughter, right in front of us, that's just kind of crazy to me. Anyway, no one ended up getting shot. The woman was taken into custody. Her daughter was released to a grandparent. Jesus. Yeah. I hope this one is lighter. It's not, Miles. <laughs> Got bad news. Man. We brought this up yesterday briefly in the introduction to the show. A couple in India was arrested for selling their eight-month-old baby to buy an iPhone 14 and make Instagram reels while traveling. 
So Indian media reported that the case of a young couple from West Bengal who were so obsessed with Apple's newest handheld that they sold their toddler to buy one. Jadeev and Safi Ghosh, they started attracting the attention of their neighbors when they started traveling around the state and flashing their brand new Apple iPhone 14. Because here's the thing, the couple have been known to earn a very meager monthly income and had often struggled financially in the past, so the drastic change didn't make any sense, especially since it coincided with the mysterious disappearance of their eight-month-old son. With the couple's neighbors, they reached out to local authorities about the disappearance of the kid after they couldn't get a straight answer from the couple about a sudden disappearance. And during the investigation, the mother finally admitted to selling the eight-month-old boy to a woman so that she and her husband could buy the phone and create Instagram reels while traveling around together. Now, as if selling their toddler son was not bad enough, the young parents, they also attempted to sell their seven-year-old daughter as well, but they were unsuccessful. Jesus. The police were able to track down the eight-month-old toddler to a house that the woman provided. Uh, she and the baby's parents have been charged with human trafficking. Wow, this is a lot. So I'll try to make it as quick as possible. All right. So, the woman that dragged her 14-year-old out of the car after a high-speed chase lost the gas and then used her as a human shield while choking her and telling the police to shoot them, shoot them both. Correct. That is awful. That is the most traumatizing thing I can imagine on a kid. And just the fact that your mom's an idiot and there you are in that situation and there's nothing you can do about it and you're huh. crying and you're upset. And the cops don't know that's a daughter. This is a horrible situation because she's old enough to understand what's going on. Yeah, she knows, oh, what's, she going knows what's going on. Now, the second story, that's pretty bad as well. I'm going to say all things considered, these two kids with the parents with the iPhone. Now, granted, that is not the way that you put your kid up for adoption. But if anybody shouldn't be raised by some couple, it's those two. <laughs> So although the situation was ridiculous and what they got out of the situation being an, uh, a, tel uh, a phone is ridiculous, I believe those kids are going to have a better life. They're going to be placed sure. in a better home and they're not going to have to deal with two people that could potentially ruin their life based on the fact that they're not fit to be parents. Correct. So I'm going to say, believe it or not, the people who try to sell their kids for an iPhone, they're going to suck the least in this scenario based on the three stories presented. All right, I see what you're doing there. <laughs> I yeah, trying, the, to, trying to shine a turd. The, well, yeah, yeah. Well, you're right. I mean, that's that's the only the, choice none in of this these game. Are good. Yeah, right. I'm gonna the woman with the 14 year old sucks the most, but I'm gonna say, oh, I guess the prison sucks the least. <laughs> you hate saying it. Too. I hate saying it because and the only reason I would say that sucks the least. It's just because the whole private prison system we have in this country is effed up to begin with. Right, right. I mean, that's shocking that the government wrongly put him in jail, kept him in there as he wouldn't take a plea deal, and now he owes them money. Owes them for accommodation. But I think that's better than your parents trying to sell you or your parents using you as a human shield in front of the police. When stated like that, I'm inclined to agree. Right. <laughs> I mean, that's really, I yeah. mean like, look, that is awful. That, is. I mean, I am so pissed at that story, but I'm just All like... All of these stories piss me off. I don't know why we do this. I was there every Wednesday. I'm just like, God damn it, I hate people. Mm, I'm going to have to go punch it out. To make it continues <laughs> on uh, Who Sucks Less, if you follow KISW on Facebook and on Twitter, you are listening to The Men's Room. 99.9 KISW. The shenanigans continue. This is The Men's Room with Miles and Thrill. All right, come to the minutes. We'll drink and toast for the shot of the day. And we do have your headlines on the way at 5.50. But first, quick check out Mike Hawk and some of the stories and headlines he is not working on. All right, there's a new trend of women not wearing underwear to the gym. All right. I mean, is that new? Uh, it's, it's new to me. Is I it? mean, look, I don't go to the gym, but based on what I've seen most women wear to the gym, I don't know that they're wearing underwear anyway. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, some, a woman told me that years ago. I was like, man, women in the gym just seem hotter to me. She's like, yeah, they're not wearing underwear. All right. And I mean, like, a lot of those leggings and yoga pants, I mean, you can tell if somebody is or isn't. Yeah, they leave nothing to the imagination, so. Yeah. Yeah, I know. I I, I listened to that little bit from those girls' podcasts. I was like, I just assume most women weren't. Gotcha. All right. I need it. I mean, it would help me get to the gym. <laughs> <laughs> no, it wouldn't. <laughs> I'm not saying it would get me to the gym. Mm -hmm. What I'm saying is, look, Mike, the day's going to come when the like doctor I says, dude, go to the gym or die. Fine. 
If they're not wearing underwear, there's a better chance I'm going. I'm here. I'm drinking beer, but I'm here. I'm at the gym. I'm not working out. God, that's what the gym needs. Just a bar for the people. Just for like, people I, like the gym. I have a gym membership, and I come here and drink. Right. I don't work out. <laughs> oh, God. Uh, uh, yeah, I was going to say, like, right. Like, guys, you got to wear underwear. Yeah. Please. Yeah. And I, I mean, I'm sure it goes back Especially and Especially if the women are. Yeah. Yeah. Twenty four percent of Americans admit they won't use all of their vacation time this year. Take it. If you can do. Take your goddamn vacation time. I mean that's why they offered to you. You know, they're gonna give you that time, take the we used to be so proud of ourselves, like oh, yeah. the same kind of thing. Like, we worked, blah, blah, blah. And one day we just kinda looked at each other. So what what the effort are we doing? What are we doing? Take advantage of this. Right. Right. Go do something else. Exactly. What else are you working towards? Although I do remember last year the way the vacations lined up. I would not say who, but someone was like bouncing off the wall. Why are you guys on vacation? Because <laughs> you gave it to us. We took the vacation because you gave it to us. <laughs> that's why we're on vacation, man. It's like that's a decision you made. If you gave us nine months of vacation, I would take a nine month oh, vacation. God. I don't. I don't know what to tell you. Yeah, I got in trouble for that one too. <laughs> But it's like, yeah. I'm like, I cannot be, you can be angry, but I don't want to hear about it. You gave us vacation time, so we took vacation time. Right. Jesus Christ. I, I caught stuff on some personal day. And then I, right, then I. You talked, gave us personal right, day. Then I talked to my brother who works as an administrator. He was like, just go back in there and say, it's a personal day and walk out. And I was like, oh, yeah, that's right. You're not even allowed to ask me. Correct. I was just being nice and letting you know what I was doing. See, that's the funny thing about <laughs> it, right? So, <laughs> and I want—I don't know if it's mandatory or whatever it is, but certain companies will give you three personal days a year. All right. Now, I have not taken a personal day, but I keep wanting to take a personal day. And if they say, why? Well, I'm like, it's personal. Right. Man, Seriously, don't you don't have to tell yeah. anybody. If, like, listening to this. Like, just say you're taking a personal day. Obviously, it's not going to look awesome if you take it on July 5th. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But you sound smart. <laughs> right? You know what I mean? Honest to God, if you're going to take a personal day, July 5th, uh, maybe depending on your work schedule, January 2nd, you know, whatever. Yeah. Uh, March 18th. Oh, yeah. The oh, yeah. Tuesday following Memorial Day. Did you say the May 6th? Tuesday following Labor Day. May 6th. That's a good call. <laughs> There's been years where I don't go out on St. Patrick's Day. I don't know what it is. Every year, Cinco de Mayo, I'm like, oh, I'm not going to do it. May 6th. I end up out Tequila somewhere. Tequila sounds I great. <laughs> I can't take personal days. I'd say we do that next year. We take our three personal days, but we'll do it. Like we said, March 18th, May 6th. Yeah. And depending where July 4th falls, it can be July 4th or the Tuesday after Labor Day. Are you listening, Ryan? Because we're going to get drunk. I'd be <laughs> stupid drunk. <laughs> Mattel is hiring a chief Uno player to play their new version of Uno Quattro. I so I don't know what the new game is, but I'm like, what are they so offering? Seventeen grand to play? Forty four, yeah. Forty four grand, something like that. Yeah. Well, excuse me. What's your side game? Uh, I, I play Uno. Come back, Ted. TV time's coming, buddy. <laughs> no personal dates. Uno. Uno. <laughs> yeah. I win. Give me my 44 G's. I might be wrong on that number. There was a lot of fours to go with it because it coincided with the Uno Quad. Uh, Uno yeah, Quattro. I'm pretty sure I saw 44 G's as well. Okay. It might have been 4,400, but I think it was 44 G's. Walmart is uh, bringing more ads into their stores. They're going to have little oh, screens. It was 4,444 It was 4, a week. A so week. it is okay. a total of like around 18,000. Gotcha. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. I'll be here tomorrow. So how many weeks? Because forty four hundred a week, Dad, if that's the year, that's a lot more than eighteen thousand. Yeah, you're doing pretty well if you're doing that a week. Mm -hmm. A week, right? I mean, over two hundred grand. <laughs> <laughs> this is our last show, ladies and, and gentlemen. We are out. I'm now your Uno master. Yeah, go you're just working Uno. two to six p.m. four days a week for September to early October. There it is. Two to six. Yep. Like when our show was on. Yep. I, see, Castle did that. He's Castle lying. said they would take this job, so oh, make sure it's two to dude. six. What if we just, that was the show for you like listen to us play early Uno. September to late October. We just mm -hmm. played Uno in here. Why not? Well, invite different listeners in. And we said, look, we're getting paid for this. There you go. Different listeners. I'm going to do the big Uno challenge. <laughs> 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 oh, we got ideas. Yeah. Right. Walmart is introducing more ads into their stores. They're basically going to have little screens that are up inside the, the aisleways that's just going to have ads running. There, there's going to be ads on their, on their Walmart radio that's playing over the top. You know what I've always yeah. thought, man? Between watching TV or or just going through the internet, like, 
I wish there were more ads. We need more advertising. Can I get more? Because I love like clicking on a story, then a pop up ad scrolls over my entire screen, for and real? I have to wait for it to unfold before and then I can like exit. Or the thirty second mandatory commercial before the one video that you asked me to watch right. that I never get to because I will not wait thirty seconds. So you're oh, right. I watch them every time. But I was like, man, please, can we just get more ads? And Ted watches them every time because he's addicted to watching those ads. There's a handful of addictions that we just don't really own up to, but I'm going to help you own up to them right now. <laughs> Top 10. Top 10. 10 addictions you ignore because acknowledging them means you have a problem. <laughs> I wouldn't say this is a problem specifically, but I like to pull out my nose hairs and then take pictures of them so I can document how long they are. <laughs> Bonus. Sometimes there's a little booger left over, and I like to wipe those on door handles. <laughs> <laughs> now that I can get me out. <laughs> so these are these are addictions that you ignore because acknowledging them means that you have a problem. We start with an anger addiction. It's something that we were literally talking about off the air today. People's addictions to anger. Yeah, like people, people are very addicted to anger right now, but it's also kind of the. It's Honestly, big business. It's it is big business, man. You want, I don't personally, but a lot of people want other people to be angry because it it furthers their agenda and or their career. Is and it honestly, that or is it just people that are angry all the time? No, no, no. It's an addiction to anger. It's a, There's actually chemical to it. It's It releases serotonin. All right. Getting some people angry. I know just like to fight. Yeah, like, yeah, like, they yeah. don't, and it's like I like I can't talk to you. Like I'm not trying to fight with you, right? But right. that's just what they know. Or it's like reading the comment section of a news story. Like you already know you're going to get angry, correct? So I just don't bother because I don't care what people think about this thing. And but a lot of people make it a point. I read all 127 comments, and this person's stupid. It's like, what did you expect, right? man? Come on. Uh, I like. I don't. You know what? I will say. Sometimes I'll look at a spicy post on Facebook. I'll read the comments. I'm not going to comment. Right. Because right. I don't think it's worth it getting into it. But sometimes I do just, you're right. I'll just look at it for joy and be like, oh, well, oh. Yep. You have an addiction now, to now, other people's now anger. I, now I know where you're coming World's from. World's still stupid. All right. Uh, attention addiction. Attention addiction. What is, what is this? Uh, these are addictions that you ignore because acknowledging them means that you have a problem. Mm -hmm. Attention addiction, Ted. You're addicted yeah. to attention. Can manifest in many ways, including social media, causing issues in school, causing chaos in the oh, workplace, oh, Ted. Oh, oh. okay. I, well, I thought it was I couldn't pay attention. No. Oh, my bad. <laughs> no, this is people that need Craving attention. attention. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, it's hard to say we don't when we work on the radio. Facts. <laughs> cell phone addiction. <laughs> Yep, I'm it's, safe from that. It's fairly new, and it, it, all it does is just get worse because cell phones, in different ways, are making life more convenient. In other ways, they're just taking the rest of your life away. But they need to stop saying cell phone. The cell phone's just a tool. It's what you can do. On, right? Correct. It's the internet on your cell phone. Yeah. They're their Facebook. You know what I mean? The phone itself's just a phone. It's how it's they like your addiction is. It. Everything's there. Sugar addiction. Well, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It's good. It tastes yeah. delicious. Sure. Yeah, we've talked about this one forever. Ted, you've, you've brought it up on many a meat and potatoes that that's very much a tactic that is used to just get people to continue eating what they're eating. Yes. Yeah, 100%. It's and it sugar. releases it releases chemicals that like the MDMA does. Exactly. I mean, a very low dose, but like See, you love when, it. When I, think about so someone, when I think about somebody with a sugar addiction, I think of someone with a handful of Skittles all the time or walking around with eating candy. Sugar all comes from the carbs for the most part. It's so like if you eat pizza, that's a sugar addiction. Sure. Gambling addiction comes in. Again, these are the well, addictions yeah. that you ignore because I mean, it breaks down into sugar, problem. but right. I think right. more right. of a sugar addiction is you like something sweet. sweet. Right. Yeah. But uh, gambling addiction does show up there, but that's kind of one of the louder addictions that people just, I feel like. And I've read that they're addicted on. to losing. Like the rush. Yeah. Sure. The rush of losing? Yeah. Why? Well, I, I don't like that rush. <laughs> that rush. I just for sucks. me personally, I'm like, this. No, I, but it's one of those weird mind things that, yeah. like, you know what I mean? Like, most people, if you don't have an addiction to it, you could win money and walk away. They they, they can't. It's kind of like a Jenga tower falling down. I guess. You know what I mean? <laughs> I, look, I don't understand it, but I don't gamble a ton. Yeah. I gamble on farts. But you know what you do have, Ted? A sports addiction. Oh, is that a real thing? That is a real thing. Oh, you're oh, I'm guilty. You like the poster child for it. 
I'm asking if it's a real thing. It's like a, it's I've a never real heard of thing. Sports Ted. addiction. Sports addiction. Jesus Christ. I know I watch sports. Pandemic. <laughs> Korean baseball. Slippery stairs. Ted, you're addicted to sports, buddy. <laughs> okay. Might as well face it. You're addicted to sports. <laughs> that was the original title. Celebrity addiction. Oh, for sure. And that doesn't know anything. I, when when we when we think celebrities, we tend to think movie stars. That is yes. music. That is sports. That is. Any level of entertainment, yeah. anything that where there's enough people that know them, that is a celebrity. There are local celebrities, there's national celebrities, global celebrities. It's, isn't that just an entertainment addiction? You just like to be entertained by whatever you like. No, a bit, I think, but it's celebrities like specific. Think about like the Kardashian. Thing. Correct. There's okay. no right. okay. talent. Right. That, and I'm not even bashing that, but there's no particular. They're not singing, they're not dancing, they're not acting. They just exist. Reality TV is kind of based on that. And it's not so much the entertainment factor of it, it is diving into what the they're doing correct. I love Ryan Reynolds. What is he doing at this moment? I exactly. I don't have. To I don't know. need to see Deadpool. I want to know what he's exactly. doing. Exactly. Right Adult entertainment does come up there. That's. A, I, well, I feel like that's been in talks for quite a while. Is porn addiction? It has mm. been. Yeah. Oh, yeah. For sure. That's a real thing. It absolutely is. A it's real also thing, tough because it's. I've seen stuff where it's like teenage boys or early twenties have trouble having sex. regular sex. Right. Just because it's you could go through so many images. Correct. And your expectations different. Yeah, right. She's not that limber and you're not that good, right? But you, you have to recognize that that's Correct. the case. I mean, and you can suspend reality when you're when you're watching adult entertainment. We can because we're old enough. Well, and even they can when they're young enough. But if you just get that drilled into your head over and over and over and over again, you're going to have a slight expectation and a slight foundation that this is actually something that happens. She's going to crave it. No, she's not. <laughs> <laughs> and sometimes, right. look, I grew up reading Penthouse Forum. And to this day, never had a neighbor walk walk over, knock on my door, I and know. it just happened. We've had callers that have You know what I'm saying? Like, like, it, just, it just doesn't work out that way. And it turns out, when you turn 21, you're not just going to have sex with Playboy models. Correct. It's like, dude, when I turn 21, it's like when you turn 21, right. you're going to be 21. You're still not having sex with her. I'm going to send my neighbor a picture of my dad, and she's yeah. just going to come over. Dude, I just got arrested! <laughs> <laughs> and then the number one addiction that you ignore, because acknowledging it means that you have a problem. We have said this one and screamed it from the rooftops. A news addiction. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Yep. Turn it off, man. I love the way that you do it, Mr. Hill. You get you get your finger on the pulse, realize that the world is still chaotic, but at least it's the chaotic that we can manage, and then you just shut it off. Well, like I said, I explained it to the kids, because the kids are at the age now where they hear things, so they worry about things. And I go, look, you're, it's fine to worry about anything you want to worry about, but like I said, just remember, the good news is that as long as bad news is still the news, that is good news. Correct. Right. That means that is still not the normal. Correct. A man in Mississippi was sentenced to 40 years after breaking out of prison, but one detail about a situation is shaking heads, Miles. What was that? I'll tell you all about it at 5.50. Thank you, sir. Headlines are coming up at 5.50. In the meantime, it's going to get tested on the line for Profile This at 206-803-ROCK. Have you been in an accident that wasn't your fault? feeling overwhelmed and unsure what to do next look no further the personal injury attorneys at phillips law firm are here to help phillips law firm understands that accidents can turn your life upside down that's why they're dedicated to fighting for the compensation you deserve and to making the process as stress-free as possible don't wait any longer call now 1-800-JUSTICE or visit justiceforyou.com Hi, this is Tom Borthwick, the Diamond King. We have a huge selection in store. Ten times most places in Whatcom County. We have over 100 certified large diamonds in stock. We have trained staff that went to jewelry school. We offer huge discounts all the time, every day. We have three jewelers in our store. We want you to save time. We gift wrap everything and treat you kindly with knowledge. Thank you for shopping a family-owned small business that supports nine families. We donate to over 50 charities per year. Thank you for being our customer, Borthwick Jewelry. Hey, it's Mike Hawk. Want more Men's Room content? Follow the Men's Room page of the Odyssey app and check out my live stream, A Moment with Mike Hawk, and nothing in particular with Steve the Thrill Hill. Going live Thursdays and Fridays at 1, exclusively on the Men's Room page of the Odyssey app. Hard to admit it's drinking time. Somebody out there deserves to be recognized. Austin Heroes! And the Men's Room knows just who it is. So to you, we say, bottoms up, sailor. You're the toast of our shot of the day. Drink time it is, and as usual, we head to the drink desk and see the Thrill Hill to find out who we're toasting. Yes, indeed. Just want to read this uh, one text that came in. It says, Thrill, I gambled on a fart today. It was in an elevator. 
I won luckily because I was going back to the courtroom. Mm. Yeah, oh. man, that's uh, <laughs> oh, that's maybe. The, I don't mind gambling on a fart, but I feel like if I have to go to court, that's not going to be the place to do. It. That's just me. All right, today we toast an anonymous prankster. People were asking about just little things they did. It wasn't a big pre-planned prank. It was just something that you thought of in the moment and deliver. And this is the person's story from their point of view. It says, years ago, my mother-in-law began reading The Exorcist. Now, I've seen the movie. I have not read the book. But she said it was the most evil book she's ever read. So evil, in fact, she couldn't even finish it. So she took it over to the beach and threw it into the ocean off of a fishing pier. Because she was freaked out. All right. I went and bought another copy, ran the foster over it, and left it in the night table drawer by her bed. My father-in-law said that night was the first time in her life that she'd ever screamed and fainted at the same time. <laughs> I'm going to hell, but I'll go laughing. Damn. I love that move, man. That's that evil, is, but that's funny. It's it's funny enough that I, I'd let the evil go. Just the idea that the book came back. How long would you let it run? I don't say I did it 10 years ago to my own mother. I don't know that I would have told her yet. All right. I just, if she still brought it up, I wouldn't tell her. I just wouldn't. If it still freaks her out, like, ah, no chance I'm telling her. All right. So we pour this booze and we drink this booze because we think it's yummy. Yummy. So over the tongue and down the throat to party in our tummies. Down the hola, bitchola. The men's room presents Profile This. And Steve with Throw Hill, could you please tell everyone how Profile This is played? No. Actually, I'll tell you what I will. It's a simple game, Miles, where we share with you a real-life news story. Something that happened right here on planet Earth. Earth, 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 Earth. And as you listen to the story, based on the stereotypes you believe to be true of people and the decisions that people make, we'll ask you what it is you think makes the story a story. Hello, Cole. Welcome to the men's room. Hey. Hola. Hola. Hi, Cole. Hola. You, under you understand how this here game is played? I do. Fantastic. Today, you have your choice of one of three stories. We have Bite Me. In other words, what did someone find in their food? We have Interior Decorating, where you guess the foreign object that ended up on the inside of someone. And finally, we have Animalized This, where you guess the animal responsible for causing the problem. Um, I think I'm going to have to go with Interior Decorating. <laughs> All right, sadly, not in the butt, but in the throat. A Saudi man, he had to undergo laparoscopic surgery to unblock his airway after he accidentally swallowed something while playing with it. <laughs> a medical team at a hospital in Saudi Arabia, they've been praised for saving a man's life by extracting the object from his respiratory tract. Now, just how the 49-year-old man managed to swallow it in the first place, still unclear. But most news sources claim that he was, quote, playing with it. Now, according to Gulf News, the 49-year-old man was admitted to the hospital's emergency room where staff noticed he had trouble breathing. X-ray examinations showed an object inside the respiratory passage, and the patient told doctors that he had accidentally swallowed the object while playing with it. So it was decided that an endoscopy to remove the object and clear the blockage of the airways was the best course of action. But the fact that the man was a heart patient made that procedure a lot more complicated. The good news is... The laparoscopic surgery was successful. The object was recovered. The patient was still hospitalized for a few days to ensure there are no more complications. But inevitably, he was allowed to go home. The question is, what did he swallow? Was it a soda can? Was it a fidget spinner? Was it a lighter or was it a car key? Soda can, fidget mm. spinner, lighter or car key? Hmm, you know... I'm kind of maybe leaning towards fidget spinner, but what do you guys think? Hmm. Did I hear you say he was a golfer? No, he was he's from the go golf news. G U L F. Oh, 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 all right, my bad. I was like, golf ball. I'm going to say <laughs> that. that uh, <laughs> that's not one of the options you put as a golf Cole, ball. Cole, I'm going lighter. Lighter? Lighter? Mm, you know what? I like, you know what I like, Dave? Let's go with lighter. Lighter, you're joining me. All right, Cole. Yep, I'm joining online. I don't know how he did it, but I think he swallowed a fidget spinner. Fidget spinner. What did this guy swallow? A soda can, a fidget spinner, a lighter, a car key? We're going to find out next. That was a tease. For 25 years, Stamps.com has made mailing and shipping easy. All you need is a computer and printer. Imagine mailing and shipping right from your desk, anytime. No traffic, no waiting, no hassle. 
Plus, Stamps.com gives you discounts up to 84%. Sign up for Stamps.com today. Use code PROGRAM for a four-week trial, plus postage and a digital scale. That's Stamps.com, code PROGRAM. 99.9 KISW. We return to the men's room with Miles and Thrill. All right, uh, the categories interior decorating on profiles. We've got a Saudi man. He had uh, a blocked airway after Correct. accidentally swallowing an item that he was playing with. Object was successfully removed. Question is, was he playing with a soda can, a fidget spinner, a lighter, or a car key? And Cole, that is the very question that we propose to you. We'll start with the Ted Smith. Mm. You want the fidget spinner? Yeah, it seemed obvious. But I'll tell you what, man. I actually, that has happened. Where I just Googled something, things that people have swallowed, and I could not believe it. One of them was a fidget spinner. Hmm. All right. I'm like, you know what? I had to throw that in there. They seem kind of big to swallow. Yeah. What do I know? Uh, I let's see. see the bearing falling out and getting swallowed, but the I, whole fidget spinner? That's what I'm saying. And But the article I read, it was in the entire fidget spinner went down an adult's <laughs> freaking throat. Man, I, I don't get it. But they'll Winner. be popular in prison. Uh, but Cole, you agree with Miles, and you went with a lighter. No! Uh, Tell me it's a soda can. No, it was his car key. Huh. Hmm. Because they kept saying, how did you get a car key stuck in the throat? And he's like, man, I was just playing with it. And I don't think he's like playing with it, but just, you know, flipping it in your right, hand, yeah. whatever. And somehow Damn. went into his mouth and down his throat. Now for all TV news all the time, time for TV time with Ted. Ted. And now, because your pathetic life is confined to countless hours in front of a talking box, the men's room presents TV time with Ted. Ah! Uh, you know, it's funny, like, we, we were talking about different, Mike had a list there of different addictions and this and that, and one of them was uh, celebrity addiction, Yes, right, to what they're doing and this and that. So I talk about, I like, I like the Vice Network, and they have a couple different shows. We started with Dark Side of the Ring, and it was like Dark Side Very of Comedy, the 90s. Now it's now they've gotten into Dark Side of the 2000s. Oh, boy. So I watched another episode about uh, of that last night. And basically, a lot of it was about Lindsay Lohan, right? Okay. So it's it's funny, like I, because we were all part of it, that I kind of forget how quickly that, like the celebrity stuff changed with like the blogs and all that stuff. Like, do you remember Prez Hilton? Yes. yes. Yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And it's funny, like, like I almost forgot about that stuff. But you're, we're just so used now to like TMZ is the authority. That we don't think about they it. have their own stuff, right? So like when Lindsay Lohan got famous, like she started out as a kid star. Was it a? Uh- Oh, Tina Fey. Mean Girls? No. Not before Mean Girls. But, but uh, even yeah. before that, you got to keep in mind, when she was a kid, she was already doing, uh, like a little kid, she was in like films and TV and oh, stuff, yeah. which right. I did not know. I Right, I, I thought she came along with... Uh, uh, the Mike, what is it when they switch the parents? Freaky Friday? Freaky Friday That or whatever. was the name of it? Okay. Right. Yeah, so there's a couple things, but then, right, between that... Uh, parent Trap. Parent Trap. Between Damn that it. and like... Uh, we were just saying mean girls and stuff. Like mm-hmm. she is, she has made millions for these studios and everything. Sure. I also kind of forgot that like when she gets famous, she is literally eight or seventeen, just turning eighteen. Then some stuff kind of happens at home. Uh, you know the yeah Dina and her dad were like in a divorce or her dad was in jail already. Okay, twice. what was he in jail for? I can't remember if it was fraud or like... Like white collar crime or... Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Stuff like that. So it was already a little shady. Right. Right. The mother obviously wants her to be a star and stuff. And and that's a tough line too. Because like generally I think a lot of those parents can push kids into it. But also it happens in sports. Some kids like it and they like doing it. Right. Right. Same thing with sports. Like I, I had a friend that was really good at baseball. But he quit when he got to high school and played a different sport because he just couldn't stand, like, listen to his father anymore. Oh, really? Right, because somebody in the family obviously was a little frustrated with their career. So, right, he was just like, I'm done. Remember, I mean, hell, there was, uh, I'm trying to, you guys remember that quarterback that came out of maybe UCLA. He was supposed to be like the man. Liner? And No, no, no. This was years ago, like early 80s. He was on like the cover of SI and everything. But basically, he had like a mental breakdown because like all he had done his whole entire oh, right. life he just play football. was play quarter. Well, it was just play football. And he was like, I'm sick of it. <laughs> like, even though I'm good at it, like, I hate it. You know what I mean? Miles, you must know people like that. Like, they play a sport for so long. They're just like, I'm doing it, but I hate it. 
Yep. You know what I mean? I oh, mean, yeah. look, I have some yeah. buddies that played. I mean, I told you, I had a buddy, Rashad, the last practice in high school football. He threw his helmet in the woods because he was like, I'm not playing in the game. I freaking hate. I'm tired of it. We were at a state championship, but uh, the game before that, and we lost to, to get there. And walking, you know, just to the team bus, and my buddy and I are just like, he was kind of crying because he's like, thank God, man, we're seniors. This is over. I'm like, we're never going to have to do this crap again. It, 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 it's over. It's over. Thank God. Right. So we became uh, college roommates. And then I made the team of West Virginia. And he just looked at me. And he's like, what are you doing, man? Like, what are you doing? And I'm like, I got to go run, man. I got to get in shape again. <laughs> like, yeah, I got to like, like it. He's like, what are you doing? So for Lindsay Lowen, she she gets super famous. And, the, and then also, I forgot. Like, listen, the stuff that went on those blog sites and everything, like, it just wouldn't fly today. Oh, you know, like oh, Perez God, Hilton was yeah. rough. And look, we were guilty of it. We were on the air. No, we right. absolutely don't. But it was just a stuff. different thing. Like, and look, I, and again, I've gotten older. As a 42 year old male, that's I can a lot sit, to do with the rest. Right. I could sit here and be like, Jesus, how are people so mean to an 18 year old girl that really just, she didn't know. She was going through mm. life. Then there's a lot of pressure. So it's, it's also weird that like her and Paris Hilton were kind of famous together and Britney Spears. Mm. They've all had. A ton of issues. This I is way like before the Kardashians got brought right. into that, too. Oddly well, enough, Kim Kardashian was already running in that clique. She's running she's just in the not clique. famous yet because the mo- they haven't released uh-huh. her sex tape. Okay. That, and but that's it's, literally it, right. And they made a good point, which I agree with. It is kind of wild that over the years, like, Britney, you know, Britney celebrated when she got broke through her uh, governorship. Mm-hmm. Paris Hilton was just arrested a bunch and this and that, just as much as Lindsay Lohan. But, like... For some reason, it seemed like they focused on her, and she was like the most evil, like worst the bad person. girl, like the and mean like, girl. And she she messed up plenty, right? Like she went through phases where she wouldn't she wouldn't show she missed a day of work, and on a film set, it's a massive deal, right? Because there's hundreds of people there that they're paying for that aren't there. But it's funny, you're right. You know, as I get older, even because we would bust on Bieber back in the day and all this, and then I think back, like, okay, I'm making their money at 17 years old. What? They did at their age when they had all that money. When, and look, at that age, I don't care who you are. There's a lot of things going on in, in your brain, in your body, everything. So you, there's a good chance to screw up. I would have been the poster boy for effing up, just knowing how I was at that age, right? And I have that kind of cast. Like, dude, I don't even know if I'd be alive right now. But but, but at the time, you know, I'm diving on them too. Now that I'm older, I'm like, look, man, they're 18 years old, or the hell they are. They have millions of dollars. They got all the stress. Like, let them f up. But sure. Bieber, I will say though, like it's also worse for those girls. We have a weird thing, right? When these girls, especially the Disney girls, when they get to 18 or whatever, it's like, and, and look, they're 18 year old girls, so they're going to show a little more skin. But then we seem to get like oddly obsessed with it, and it's like, oh yeah. I mean, there's a famous SNL skit, right, where she's. Uh, uh, not Lord of the Rings. They're the Hogwarts or whatever. Okay. And, it, and her boobs are kind of hanging out. And the other two kids can't focus, right? <laughs> so it's it's weird. But then, like six months later, they're all being like, oh, she's a slut and this and of that. Course. So then it and it kind of triggers another thing. The people that have kids and stuff are like, well, I don't want my daughter. But it, I, I'm telling you, it was a very good episode. And, and like, look, I was guilty of it. I'm part of it. But I was like, yeah, that is weird. All of us were. And, and all look, it happens to a lot of the celebrities. We love to build people up and then... Tear them, Tear them down. down. Sure. And they would go to places to be seen, but ultimately their life was documented by other people. So Paris so, so Hilton, when, you're when, right. Paris Hilton, that's in there. She hired a guy, and he's in there, and he's like, look, I took Paris Hilton specific places to be seen. Lindsay Lohan kind of got involved in that crew, so she started showing up with us. But then... Like it, it kind of got out of control because then, then you've got you got the paparazzi with all these pictures and stuff, and like Christ, I want like, I mean, like, I just started driving again. I mean, I've had a license, but just haven't yeah. driven in twenty years. If there's twelve people flashing bulbs at me, I'm probably going to hit something. Sure. And Nicole Richie bowed out. So there's there's a few people who like I want to get out of that lifestyle. The but- New York Post. The New York Post called them like the bimbo trio. Sure. But that's what <laughs> you're saying. Comes that's, your nickname, that's right? what you're saying about about young women instead of men. And the age, as, as far as what you're saying, Steve, like John Moran, just don't put it on Instagram. Just don't. Right. You you did that. No no one was following you in film. But for a lot of people, but I, I, but I understand that your age. You got to understand, though, like, age, that's what this it. show was saying. It's like, right, but even when we get on John Morant and stuff for, for making those mistakes, we don't care if he has six girlfriends. Right. 
But if these girls at 19 and 20 and 21 have a bunch of boyfriends, then they're branded as yep. whores and the worst people on the planet. So that's like an extra layer that's like, it's, can't even, can't it's even not date. fair. Yeah, right. You know, and the irony of that is, and if you're a dude, you know this to be true. It could have been something like Miley Cyrus, like you said, Lindsay Lowen. That Miley went any through Any of these it. people, but hey, dude, 17, one more year, right? Yeah. Please and it's like, dude, what is wrong with you? But, like, you're saying, like, you put them in the position where you're saying, I'm counting down the day, just illegal. Why? She's not going to date you. There's no reason for Selena you to Selena Gomez went through that machine, too, kind of. Okay. Yeah, and it, you see it a lot with the Disney stars. And, look, it's okay, right? 19, 20-year-old girl, right? right. They're going to be attractive. But I do feel look like... Look at a college dude. Like, that's probably... But also going to date, date people because you're not going to get married and locked down at that time in your life. You're, you're right. having your fun. So it's just, it's just a, it was just a different thing. And I, like I'm saying, I hadn't I hadn't really thought about it that way. And I was like, oh, yeah. But so it's also, she just had a kid, by the way. It looks like she's doing it. It's right. tougher mm-hmm. coming from Disney, I think, more than any other enterprise. Because Disney, whether you like them or not, they do an exceptionally good job of protecting their brand. Right. Yeah. So if you know about a Disney kid, say, for six years before they hit 18, everything they've done has been very happy, very smiley, very wholesome, very friendly family. And take Miley Cyrus says, you know, she's what Hannah Montana, whatever the hell the name is. She was Hannah Montana. That's what everyone knows. The truth is she's kind of this punk rock chick that wants to do her thing. I think she's done the best job of adjusting just because she straight up told everyone. I don't effing care what you think. I fulfilled my contract. And yes, on Disney, I was what Disney wants you to be. I did my job. A lot of cultures have different names for different things. Like The Japanese have a lot of different names that kind of like just exactly pinpoint what you did. Same with the Germans. Right. Yeah, yeah. You know, like the Amish just call it rum springing. And it's, you got to pass. Right, because we understand what it is. You got to pass. Like, you are between the well, ages I, of 18 and, 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 and 22. And, and even though the 18 is a legal age, we understand it just from an adult standpoint. You're going to do dumb stuff then. That, that's just kind of right, part I of growing up. I think in the up. States, we just acknowledge it as college. Now, yeah, right. Yeah, that's what we call right? right. yeah. hey, Miles, you know, right? Your daughter, she, you just went through this, right? Both your daughters went to college and stuff. Like, there's obviously things you don't, like, you don't need to know. She doesn't need to tell you. Mm-hmm. You just hope they're being safe enough. But you know they're out partying. I don't right. know. I mean, look, right. I know a couple people that didn't party when they were 21. I know a few. Now that we're in our 40s, they still don't party. Right, right. <laughs> My brother. <laughs> right. right. You're that guy. When, but you're in the minority. You are the exception to the rule. But you're right. We call it college. Other people call it Rum Springer. <laughs> it's all yeah. kind of the same. But it's a it's a it's a super good show, and it just it just has a bunch of different angles and stuff. I thought it was super cool to see the guy that was like the secret publicist for Paris Hilton on there, and was just like, yeah, like we made a point. Mm-hmm. And I didn't. Even, and there's a whole Hollywood system machine. Like they went to specific after parties, Miles. You're not wrong to be seen and stuff. And it's yeah, it's it's. And it, people it's just complained insane. about it, but it's like to be fair. When your job is to be seen, you should hire someone that takes you to the places where you're going to be seen. Because like I said, with Paris Hilton, Kardashians, they didn't contribute anything else. It, they became a cult of personality because you kept seeing them doing things that you would like to do. You know, start cocaine at a mm-hmm. Vegas club before I, like, if they're not seen, their career ends. So that, I, I'm definitely a lot more forgivable. Well, and I saw Dr. Drew say this years ago on Tom Green's uh, show that used to be on TV, and he yeah. was saying that they were talking about different, like artists and celebrities going through rehab and stuff, right? And uh, he was like, he basically was like, well, the musicians, like at some point, like if they go to rehab and stuff, like they're gonna have a really tough time. But he's like, they could go play the instrument, right? You know what I mean? But like some of these reality stars or people from dating shows, like. They don't have anything to fall back on other than just this being a, famous. Correct. So it's even tough. He's like, those people have a much tougher road. And it's also tough. If you're famous for being a party animal, you know, there's some people that could pull it off. But, like, yeah, that's, that's right. hard to keep going, yeah. you know? Yeah. How am I famous yeah. now that I'm yeah. not a party animal? Well, listen, I mean, I go through it every morning, right? Like, every, you know, when you're, when you're known in the Seattle area as being the hottie, you know. And then as I, you are. As, as you I are. was. Yeah, but yeah, I've well, gotten well, older. Yeah, and, yeah. <laughs> You know, I've had to adjust right. and live with that, man. <laughs> You've done a good job, man. Thanks, dude. You, you play cool. All right, Nickelodeon. Uh, has anybody watched any of the Nickelodeon football broadcasts? Absolutely, they're great. Uh, I've seen a few. Yeah, last uh, last season I did. A little bit. It's awesome. I watched the first one a couple years ago when they did the playoff game. It is super cool. Look. You is, know, that, is that the Nate Burleson stuff, too? Yeah. Is he still he's, on that? So is he, he still the main guy? Or he, he was. was. He was, right. Uh, so now Nickelodeon's going to air an alternate telecast of Super Bowl 58. It'll be more kid-focused. They'll have the slime in there. 
Uh, it's the first time the Super Bowl has had a second presentation, but not the first time Nick has done the NFL games. We said they did a wild card game in 2020 and 21 seasons. They did a Christmas Day game last year. Uh, they're doing another Christmas game this year. And then uh, that Super Bowl game will be on February 11th, 2024. I would say record it. That's what I did. Agreed. The first couple yeah. of playoff games yeah. they did, I wanted to watch the regular football, so I DVR'd the Nickelodeon one. Also, if you ever have any smaller children in the house, this is a good way to watch sports. It is. They're not going to get bored because when they score a touchdown, they get mm-hmm. slimed. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Ted. We appreciate it. You're listening to The Men's Room. The Men's Room returns with Miles and Thrill. Now, let's see what's happening in the real world. All right, here we go. Miami Man uh, loses over $100,000 in watches after a woman puts something in his drink. Meanwhile, a man who escaped prison only had two months left to serve in the clink. 13-year-old takes parents' Tesla on a joyride before crashing into a pole. Truck crashes in California, and for you, no Tootsie Roll. And a Florida man misses his flight, so what does he do? Ah, he threatens to blow up the airport. It is time for your headlines. Now, it's time to hit the head. Lines. Here's my cock. Hey, out of time, sir. We go to Mississippi where one man just couldn't take it anymore. He was tracked down after he broke out of the local correctional facility while serving a seven-year sentence. He fled the complex and broke into a nearby home, holding the owner's hostage at gunpoint before stealing their car. Unfortunately for him, he crashed the car early into his escape and ended up hiding in a trash can just two miles from the prison before he was caught. Mm. The ache of it all is that he only had about four months left of his seven-year sentence left before he was set to be released. Seven. Dumbass. Maybe seven. something terrible was happening to him. Right? That's. I'm trying to figure that out because you're right. That math does not add up because you know he knew he had four months left. Back to being that old. Yeah. And that's stupid. He was young. Yeah, exactly. Um, yeah. But I mean, I know people that'll stay in a relationship for four more months <laughs> when they know it's over. Right. Like, like, I don't know. I'm just like, because <laughs> Christmas is coming. Yeah, yeah, right. Christmas season. Yeah, I'm just like... Yeah. I, you know what? I have no idea. I'm just a guessing something bad. Something that bad had to be happening to right. be like, you're almost done. Like, just wait. Right. Maybe he's institutionalized, Ted. Mm-hmm. He's institutionalized? Yeah. Shawshank Redemption. It's ah, that, uh, right, right, try, right. Trying to remember the, the wording that he used. He said, these walls are funny, man. First you hate them. Then you get used to them. Pretty right. soon. But, it, but yeah. <laughs> right. <laughs> Seven years, though. Right. I'm just like, dude, you're almost done. Right? Just get out, man. In other news, over to Florida, of all places, where a man fell victim to the airlines. He needed to catch a flight in order to pick up his truck from a repair shop, which is kind of far away, but hey, do you you do you. But when he got to the gate, he got the bad news that the last call had already come in and the door had already been shut. He missed his flight. Reasonably upset, the man erupted into an unreasonable reaction, swearing at airline employees and then sealing his fate by exclaiming, quote, I'm going to blow this S up. I'm going to take you all out. All right. Always well, the correct response. Well, you're going to jail. And he did. He did indeed. This, of course, prompted a call to 911, and the man was arrested on several charges. Right. Look, I understand. I missed a flight earlier this year, too, and it sucked, and I was rather angry because it was not my fault. I showed up plenty early to the airline, and it was kind of their fault as to why I didn't make my flight. There's certain words that you're just not allowed to say. You can think it. You just can't say it. Correct. <laughs> think about it like certain at the really hot chick that walked into the bar. Right. What you're thinking, do not say it out loud. What, what, what does our friend Taryn say there, Ted? Those are inside thoughts. <laughs> inside <laughs> thoughts. <laughs> yep. Sometimes that happens. Sometimes that happens. Leave man. that in your head. Leave it in your head. Right. right. It's perfect place for it. Right. It's safe in there. <laughs> yeah. Lock it away. That's why I'm glad no one has ESP. For real, man. Have you, know, you ever walked around wondering if somebody did and you change your thought process? I I think people would only because it's like they say anytime they do a, uh, an experiment, right? If someone knows a camera is on where they are, they act different than they normally would. Sure. They haven't found with kids, if you have a painting that has intense eyes, yeah, they know it's not a camera, but just the feeling that someone's watching you, you act different. So God knows. If you could read my mind, and oh look, my God, it's not God. always positive stuff. We can bring up the hot chick, yeah, yeah, yeah. She might be flat. I might be disgusting, but she's flattered. Other people would walk in and be 
so humiliated based on See, my initial judgments of I, what they are. I have a weird paranoia of that to where I'll be walking down the street and, you know, an attractive woman will pass me. I'll go, wow, she looked damn good. And then I think, what if she can read my mind? And I think, she looked really good in that sweater. That was a good choice today. Here's my thing. You don't have to read my mind. My erection is the giveaway. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Yeah, I can't reach your arm, but I can read your pants. <laughs> I mean, look, it's tough. It sucks. Yeah. I got caught the other day. Oh, yeah. Looking across the bar at some cleavage. <laughs> and they realized I, like, they were like, hey, Ted. And I was like, oh, hey. Oh, no. Oh, no. Good morning. Damn it. <laughs> that is your kryptonite. I know you. Damn it. Yeah. That's why you're like on the Facebook thing. Yeah. Like, Look at these. Yeah. 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 It's clean. <laughs> it's your kryptonite. Damn, you knew them. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Oh, Ted was in a We're trance. all friends. Gentlemen, I did not get up to your face. I apologize. Yeah, that's exactly what happened. I mean, right. I'm, dude, sorry, I get it. <laughs> but it was like right after work, I was parched. You just can't to, be busted. Tired. <laughs> I know. Just hey, relaxing. look, man. Have you ever done the? Uh, this happens every once in a while. A woman will walk by with a great ass. I mean, a fantastic ass. You're outside smoking. Kind of let them walk by because you don't want to make it obvious. And then you turn to look, and in that moment, they're turning, looking at you. Yep. Oh, yeah. Busted. Sorry. That's it. Happens to me all the time. We all know what's happening. Or you're Always. trying to be nonchalant when you're walking on the street. You're kind of looking to your left and almost walking <laughs> yeah. to a damn pole. Oh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> but that is it for your headlines with that. My hawk is out. Thank you so much. We appreciate it. Big Dummy is uh, next time along with the head chef and Ted's meat and potatoes. Yes, indeed. It's all true. But in the meantime, well, we be all about this bitch for 180 seconds or so. So until then, please do what you do best. And for Aletha's sake, stay beautiful. The men's room has been taped before a live studio audience. Wardrobe and makeup provided by Mantastic Limited. This has been a presentation of the Men's Room Radio Network. Oh, man! A Double Flush production.